Watch the fake, guys. Dave Tracy back. I don't know.
Nice play. Nice catch. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. 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 here soon. Yeah. 
extra point. Kick it up, Good. And the kick. Right. By 13, Tracy. Wonderful. Go, Anthony. Anthony Scott. Go, Anthony. Go, 
Vice President of Summit. Go, go, Kevin, go. Go. Go, 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 go. It's been like that, like 40 yards or something. I guess Urker was really doing good. Man. Come on, Justin. You, ha you were ahead 13 nothing. then they tied it up. You kind of blew them away in the second half. Uh, what did it take? Well, their quarterback, Corey Shum there, he, he kind of put the hurts on us a little bit, and he tied the ball game up with a long run in the third period. It was 13-13, and then we came back and put one on the board, and then we, we got going again, and our offense started to click a little bit, and we, we got two more scores on them. Uh, Troy Thomas had three scores, had a nice 45-yard run in the fourth period that kind of iced it for us. Okay, this week it's Lewiston Porter. They haven't won a football game all season long, yet they seem to be putting points on the board every week. It just seems like it's a tough luck season for Harry Lawler and his crew. Now that's what scares you about Lewport because they're a formidable opponent and they're, they've been so close in every ball game. And how many times can you get close and not ring the bell? So uh, I know they're gonna be up to win one ball game this year and uh, we just hope it's not this one. When you go into a game like this, does it worry you that your team might have a letdown and and uh, how do you look at things in the week and practice to prepare them so they uh, take this game seriously? Well, I think they're going to take all the games seriously. Uh, when you're crowned a division champ, you don't want to get beat uh, by a team who hasn't won a ball game yet. That kind of discolor a little bit. But uh, the kids will get up. They'll get up as the week goes along. And Luport to us, has always been a big, big important issue. Uh, we play Luport tough. Of course, it is a divisional game. Now, what... Uh, what does your team have to do this weekend to beat Lewiston Porter? Uh, obviously, you got to put some points on the board because you know they can score. Yeah, they score a lot. Uh, we got to shut their passing game down mainly, and then, then they got a couple of real good sprinters out there who can turn big plays on you. So we got to hold those in. But we've had that problem all year long, we, and we've been able to solve some of those things. So I hope we can do it again this week. Looking ahead to the playoffs, do you start preparing now before the Lewiston Porter game, or do you wait till that's over? We'll wait till that's over. We'll scout this week and see. Like, really, you can't prepare too much because you don't know who the opponent's going to be, but we'll scout a couple of teams this week and see uh, the varial situations that could arise. But uh, we're going to play this game first and then worry about the playoffs. Well, now it's time to take a look at the Newport Lancers, opponent for Grand Island this week. Head coach Harry Lawler, a little tough luck for his team so far. Still looking for their first victory as they take on the Vikings and the uh, Grand Island uh, could be ripe for an upset this week. What do you think? We'll find out Saturday. I I don't know what to say. I know last year uh, uh, we were in a similar situation, and we came out and uh, for the first part of the game gave them a real good ball game, and our kids our kids played tough for the last ball game, and, and we're hoping to, to repeat that performance this year. Okay, now you, you mentioned to me that Gene Masters' team has a, has a strong running game, and that's what's uh, hurt you all season long, anything new maybe this week you can come up with to, to stop them or just hope for a great defensive performance? Well, uh, from week to week, we hope that the boys improve, and, and certainly we hope that they improve from the, this effort against Tonawanda. Uh, we gave up 38 points uh, to Tonawanda. Uh, we're, we're still we're not 100% as far as the boys. We're missing some, some starters. But uh, we, we'll play with who we got, and, and we'll do the best we can. 
once again, the story seems to be that, that your team can put the points on the board. You score a lot every week, enough to win, but you just don't seem to hold the opponent down. Well, we've been hemming and hawing all year long, and, and quite frankly, we have some boys that have some offensive talent. It shows that we've been able to score points. We lead, I looked in the Buffalo paper today, we lead the division in points scored against. We also lead in points, uh, or points scored for, we lead in points scored against. And in a nutshell is we just don't have the boys that can play defense. Yeah, also, you, you don't seem to get the bounces. It seems like the other teams get the bounces. As far as uh, you know, looking ahead to next year, this is the last game, but you know, you're know, always going to look ahead to see what you need for next year. What are you going to try to try to put into the team to maybe improve the, from the problems you've had this season? Uh, I haven't even begun to think of another year right now. Uh, our our kids, the kids that are coming back, uh, we have a number of, of younger kids that will be coming back. And uh, we will need, a, like any team, we need a commitment from them to improve themselves physically, get up in the weight room. Uh, we've had a weight room going for about three years now, and we're only getting the minimum amount of kids up there until we get some enthusiasm and some commitment from all of the boys. Uh, uh, things aren't going to turn around. I think it's apparent this year. We have some very good ball ballplayers, uh, but we don't have enough. And we just lack some commitment from some of the some of the other kids that that, that aren't out there lifting and preparing themselves physically and, and it shows against the other teams as a coach is it difficult for you to prepare a team week by week when uh, you're losing every week is it hard for you say come saturday afternoon you get the kids in the locker room before the game is it difficult for you to say let's go out there and win this one how do they react to these things it's difficult, but the kids are really a, a, a credit to them. They're, they're, they're resilient, and for the most part, the majority of the kids are out to play football and have fun. And certainly they want to win, but they also want to play the game. And so from that standpoint, uh, the majority of the kids have a good attitude and, uh, and want to play from week to week. It would be nice to win. They don't, but they still want to get back out there and play the sport of football. As far as this, this season, do you feel that they've learned anything? Oh, sure. I, we've all learned every year uh, from a coaching staff, and, and I'm sure as, as athletes we all learn uh, learn about the game and, and, uh, and a lot of other relationships with each other and everything else. Okay, to wrap it up right now, what has to be done this weekend to beat Grand Island to catch them off guard? you got to get out in front early probably, right? From an X and O standpoint, they play a nine-man front. They dare you to throw. Uh, they've done it for years. And uh, I don't think that we can run. We've mixed it up all year long. We'll have to continue to mix up the plays uh, and, and also put the ball in the air. They're, they're just taking away the run by their defensive alignment and, and basically saying, daring you to, to pass. Uh, defensively, uh, I don't know. We'll slow them down a little bit. They're, they're a rugged, rough bunch of good football players. Uh, and they've got four or five boys that are big, tough runners, and uh, everybody's had trouble stopping them. It won't be just Lewis and Porter. Everybody, obviously, they're, they're undefeated in the division. But uh, maybe we can slow them down a little bit. Thank you very much, Coach Harry Lawler of the Luport Lancers. We're going to join Lou Panessa at the broadcast location for the opening kickoff of our final telecast this year. It's the Luport Lancers against Division Three champions, the Grand Island Vikings. The opening kickoff and all the action coming up right after this timeout. Now's your chance to get a new and improved channel selection device. It's the Cable Guide. Each month, the Cable Guide features all the variety and excitement that cable TV has to offer. It's the most complete cable listing available. Call your local cable operator now, and don't miss the November issue of the Cable Guide. Packed with fascinating interviews, exciting articles, and our special section, Teaching with Television. Every colorful, easy-to-use issue of the Cable Guide can be yours by simply calling right away. Inside the Cable Guide, Highlights presents the month's top picks for feature-length movies and TV specials. Plus, our November cover story, Murder, takes an in-depth look at killer films that are assaulting TV. Sports Roundup, movies, and family specials are all at your fingertips right here in the Cable Guide. Plan ahead for today, tonight, or next week, but call your local cable operator now. It's fast, it's easy, and delivered directly to your home. But you must call right away. Good afternoon, everyone.
Juan Luke Pinesso along with Leo Sinise to bring you the final regular season football game on Adelphia Cable Communications Niagara. Today, the Grand Island Vikings, the Division Three champions, take on the Lewiston Porter Lancers on their own home field. And, uh, this day, Leo, I guess you could say we're out here on a day more suited to the first day of football rather than the last. Just a gorgeous afternoon. Sunshine temperatures in the 70s and uh, we're out here in the uh, golf shirts today probably for the last time two weeks ago when we had Lewis and Porter on television we had the winter coats out for the first time. Yeah things have sure changed since the Luport Tanawana game just last week and uh, I would have to say that uh, today's weather is probably comparable to something you'd see uh, the first week of the season. I don't know if we had a warmer day for our first game or today is warmer but it is quite breezy out there blowing uh, mainly I think it's going to be blowing across the field from uh, I believe it would be right to left on your screen. This is very similar to what we had a few weeks back when we were out here at Grand Island uh, as Grand Island took on Niagara Whitfield, the Grand Island wind. And uh, it was a very windy day that day as well. And I think it kind of stacks the cards against the Lewis and Porter Lancers. Lancers come into this game looking for their first win. They have just one tie uh, this season in their seven games. And... Grand Allen, on the other hand, is 5-1-1 one, one overall, undefeated in Division Three, And uh, they have a pretty balanced attack, both offensively, uh, with the running backs and with their quarterback, McDonald, Bob McDonald, who will uh, throw to his brother Scott quite often, and use Scott as a, as a leading rusher for this team. Lewiston Porter, on the other hand, they also uh, have a pretty good offense, but they throw the ball very well. They do have fine backs and Burns, and Shoe and Burns not starting today. But uh, the problem of this game that stacks it in favor of Grand Allen is on a windy day when you're going into the wind, you have to run the football, and Lewis Porter, as you documented, Leo, has had problems stopping the run. Well, the thing is here, you, you, you got to remember that, that Grand Island throws a lot, and they got to throw into this wind also, and, 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 and from what I hear, it's windy every game here. And it's no shortage of that today. We're going to pause for just a moment for the opening exercises from the Grand Island High School Band. Some players to keep your eyes on today, of course, for Lewis and Porter. The main man is Jeff Schuen. He comes into the game with 82 rushes for 515 yards and a 6.3 yard average and four touchdowns. Right now, we'll spread it around between three backs Brett Beavers, Scott McDonald, and Troy Thomas. Thomas had three scores in Grand Allen's win last week. Well, last week, Grand Island with a 34-13 victory over Maryvale to uh, seal up the Division Three championships. And you said it right there, Troy Thomas with three touchdowns. And, uh, he was the big push for that victory, Grand Island to win the division. Now, uh, let's see if uh, the Vikings can keep their minds set on today's game and not look ahead to the playoffs. Discipline will be the key if they want to win today against Newport. And of course, you know the Lancers haven't won a game all year and they'd like to end the season on a winning note. Well, since both these teams are in Division Three, it's really hard to match the common opponents. They've played everybody in their division as a common opponent. The only game that really stands out in your mind is the fact that Lewis and Porter tied Maryvale, the second place team in the division, the team that Grand Allen soundly trounced last week for the division title. Grand Allen will kick off and Lewisport will receive it with a win to the win in the first quarter. And the kick is away, and the wind at the back goes into the end zone for a touchback. And it's the corner. We'll start first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Good kick right there from uh, Scott McDonald. He'll kick it off. Well, he must have had a little wind with him going there. As I mentioned, it should be blowing right to left. It's uh, kind of on an angle, a little tricky, and it's uh, gusty there this afternoon. But uh, McDonald 
had a little had a little of the wind behind him there to kick that one into the end zone. Dave Tracy will come out at quarterback for uh, excuse me, wing for Lewis Porter. His brother Ray will do the quarterback. And the first play, they go over the right side of the offensive line for just a couple of yards. The running back for Lou today, you'll find Matt Tackentine, number 34, fullback. The running back, Jeff Schuin, the wing back, as I said, Dave Tracy, and the in, John Mazzocchi, the offensive line. Ryan Rabarzak, the center. The guards are David Orsi and Jason George. Well, one yard the Tony Reimer and Dennis Cutler. Well, Matt Tackentine, number 34, inserted into the backfield, known primarily for his defensive play. One yard on that carry, second down and nine. We'll get to the Grand Allen defense in just a moment. They pitch it back to Schuin, and on the reverse, Dave Tracy with the ball, looks to throw now, turns it upfield, and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Scott McDonald and Brett McDonald Veros. and Brett Veros on the tackle. Well, Grand Island wasn't really fooled by the little trick Only play by Lewiston play Porter, and uh, doesn't really help the Lancers out. Trying to get things going early, and I believe they're, they're against the win, so they... They need uh, all the help they can get, but uh, they didn't fool Grand Island. They stayed at home on that one and sealed it up. We'll call it third and eighth. Grand Island defense, left end Anthony Scott, the left tackle Steve Steck, the nose guard Jamie McBlisco as Tracy goes back to pass. Under a heavy rush, goes long, and it's picked off. Intercepted out here by Tom Feeney, the quarterback, and he returns it to the Lewiston Porter 31-yard line. Louis threw that one into traffic, no doubt about it. There were about uh, three Grand Island players in there. With their, he had a receiver on his own team, but with, with the conditions for throwing today, the ball just uh, hung up there, and uh, Feeney came down with it. We're going to see it right here. He threw into coverage and was a little short. Grand Allen takes over with good field position. They officially mark it the Lewport 32-yard line. And McDonald under rush and under tackle gets the pass away, but it falls incomplete. A tremendous rush out there on the very first play. Uh, put on by number 35, Steve Hess. Well, Lou, the key in this game for Lewiston Porter would be to keep the ball for as long as possible and not put it in the hands of Grand Island's offense because as we know, the, the Vikings can put up points. So uh, they got one strike against them so far as they turn the ball over. Second down and 10 for the Vikings. They throw a quick out pattern to McDonald and he is trying to break some tackles and gets inside the 30 yard line for a gain of a couple. They try to just isolate him out there on the cornerback one on one and he was able to pick up just a couple of yards. Crochet in on the stop. Well, just a few yards there. McDonald did a good job just to get the couple yards as uh, he fought off a tackler for Lewiston Porter. They give him four yards on the play. It'll bring up third and six. Grand Allen going right to the air on their first two plays offensively. Try to take advantage of that Feeney interception. Third down here. They go inside, and it looks like Thomas on the carry, and he's going to be short of the first down. Maybe about a yard or two short. Bring up fourth down and expect Grand Allen to go for it here. On fourth and, they're marking the ball at the 25 yard line, so we'll call it fourth and three. Yeah, I'd say they'd go for it. Uh, pretty confident in their offense and what they can do. They are the division champions, of course. It's just that part of the field where you go for it. Oh, uh, that's true. If you're looking at a 42 yard field, well, not, not too many high school kickers have that kind of range, even though with the wind at their back, uh, Scott McDonald. Uh, well, the kickoff went into yeah, the end zone. Yeah, kick it in the end zone, but there's so much more difficulty in putting it through those uprights. We can stack the offense for you for Grand Allen right now while we have the opportunity. Jeff Millar at center. The guards are McGlisco and Mark Nowicki. The left tackle is Steve Steck. And the right side, it's Brian Herman. And the left end, Greg Genovese. The right end, John Benz. Bob McDonald, the quarterback. Brett Rerost. And now the ball carrier, Scott McDonald, who's close to a first down, the fourth down carry. And Troy Thomas. It's all going to depend on the spot here. And they're going to give it to him for first down at the 20-yard line of Lewiston. Good effort by McDonald. Carried some Newport tacklers with him, about three or four guys, to get the extra yardage or footage necessary to pick up the first down for Grand Island. So they're in business now. First and 10 at the Lewiston Porter 20 yard line. Moving from right to left on your screen as you look at the Grand Island cheerleaders. No sign of letdown from the Vikings after, oh, and right up the middle, McDonald saw something in the uh, Lewiston Porter defense and uh, Gene Masters on the sideline did as well. They decided to send McDonald up the middle. He got four yards. 
Yeah, it looked like they uh, cha probably changed the call there with McDonald going up the middle. Uh, not something that you usually see on a, on a first down play. Defense for Lewis and Porter features at tackles Cutlip and Craig Hotlipe. The right end is David Orsi. The left end, Matt Tackentine. We'll give you the linebackers. Troy Reimer and Brochet on the inside. And a touchdown for Grand Island. Oh, that was a nice shot. Nice play fake, Lou, by uh, McDonald as he faked the handoff up the middle and then threw the pass to Scott. And uh, one of the Newport defenders, I'm not sure who it was, uh, may have had a chance at that ball but couldn't bring it in. Well, McDonald, 2 of 3 on the drive, and he gets a touchdown. Winston Porter cannot hold it. The Grand Island cashed in. Feeney interception set up the 32 yard drive. 16 yards on the pass. 16 uh, yards on the pass play. I'll tell you, Lewis and Porter would need to play a, a pretty much a perfect game to win this one this afternoon, and they already hurt themselves with the turnover. I, I said it before, when Grand Island got the ball, and the Vikings, being the caliber team that they are, didn't take long for them to capitalize on the opportunity with the McDonald to Scott touchdown pass. They missed the extra point wide to the left. Boy, Leo trying to get the starting lineups in this game, <laughs> and so much is happening so quickly. But uh, Grand Allen jumps out in front six to nothing, and they'll kick off with the wind in their back to the Lancers. We haven't even given you the full uh, defense for Grand Allen yet. They, they shut down Lou for three downs and out on their first possession, and then marched it down the field 32 yards after an interception to get the game's first score. Well, hopefully for Lewiston Porter fans, maybe the Grand Island defense will be out there for a while and uh, you can get in some of those players for us. Scott McDonald to kick it off again. His first one went through the back of the end zone for a touchback. And as soon as the ball lands in the end zone in high school, it's an automatic touchback. You can't run it out. Awaiting the official signal. Now he gets it. The track stars are ready and the kick is... A line drive and through the end zone once again. So Jeff Schuen been neutralized by Scott McDonald. Lewis and Porter does have a fine return team and a dangerous player back there in Schuen, but Scott McDonald not giving the opportunity to run the ball back. Well, when they when the uh, teams change sides and uh, the wind the wind direction, uh, Lewis and Porter may get a chance uh, to return some some of those kickoffs and, and or punts. But uh, as long as Grand Island is kicking with the wind, it, it, they're going to be starting at their 20 anytime they get the ball. And now Ray Tracy gives to Ryan Burns, who checks back into the game. Burns breaking all sorts of tackles, and then it's stripped of the football. It's loose. Ryan Burns busted it out to the 33-yard line, and boy, he broke four or five tackles, but was stripped of the ball, and Grant Allen says they have it. We have seen Grant Allen do that so often, strip the ball carrier of the ball. This time, Lewis and Porter able to fall back on it. A lot of blue jerseys there, but the last man up is a Donardo for Lewis and Porter. Yeah, you're going to see as they take the ball from Burns, he kept going, and it, it seemed like it took him a second or two to realize that he didn't have it. But uh, the Lancers recover on that one. They're going to have to watch out for that. Going to have to hang out of the ball with both hands, both arms. 13 yards on the carry for Ryan Burns. It's a first down for the Lancers, their first of the game. They go to Jack Schuwen this time, and he's stacked up right away. Grand Allen defense number 55, Steve Steck got the first hit on him. Steck, the left tackle. With this go, the nose tackle, the right tackle, Jeff Millar. The ends are Anthony Scott and Brett Biros. Greg Genovese, the inside linebacker, along with Scott McDonald, Troy Thomas, and... Jeremy Bernadoni on the outside. Tom Feeney, who has the interception, and Bob McDonald are the corners. No gain on the play. So it'll be second down and 10 now. Ryan Burns, the lone back. Jeff Shue in the wing back. Burns gets the carry, shakes off a tackler, and gets it out to about the 38-yard line before he's brought down. Oh, well, Burns picked up, he picked up a nice, uh, a nice hole off the right side of the, the offensive line there to get his initial push through and uh, pick up some pick up some extra yards. He found the opening on that one. Four yards on the carry for the for Burns. That brings up third down at six. Ray Tracy working in the face of a very difficult win here. Makes it tough to throw. They play action fake. He throws to the outside. Burns has the catch and the first down. He's in Grand Island territory at the 46-yard line. Well, that was a nice play fake there, and, and uh, Tracy with the pass got it away just in time. He had somebody right in his face, and uh, Burns, when he caught the ball, made a nice little juke to pick up an extra four or five on that one. We're going to call it a 17-yard completion. 
And it puts Lou Ford in Grand Allen territory. First and ten. The first time the Lancers have crossed it. You know, there's 6-13 remaining in the first quarter. Grand Allen leads it 6-0. Coming down the line to get to Burns. And Burns is running with some determination today. He is a man on a mission. He did not start the game. We don't know why. But in the times he's carried the football, he has run hard. And he has five yards on that carry. Well, Harry Lawler has to be happy with that because this is what he needs. He needs a ball control offense that can eventually put the points up and keep the Grand Island offense off the field. That is probably the key to this afternoon's game. Backs in an eye, and oh, Tracy, they tried to go on the silent count, and it was just a design play where Tracy in the center would be the only ones moving. They tried to catch the Grand Island defense by surprise. Nobody else moved. Tracy only able to get the ball to the 40-yard line before he's wrapped up by McGlisco. They're down at four. Well, the uh, Lancers are trying to pull some tricks out of their bag today, being the last game of the season, and they're playing a tough opponent. But so far, Grand Island isn't biting on any of them. An important third down play, and they go to Jeff Schuen behind Burns, and Schuen has the first down and much more. He's inside the 30-yard line. A gain of 10 yards there for Jeff Schuen. That's the first time he's been able to shake free. Troy Thomas on the tackle. Well, they had Burns going over the right side a few times. Now you got Schuen going over the left side. A nice mix, and it works as it gets him down to around the 29-yard line. Clock moving with 4.53 remaining in the first quarter. Newport down by a touchdown and driving on the Grand Island Viking defense here. Now they split the back. They send both wideouts to the near side. They go to Ryan Burns right up the middle, and Burns has again five, maybe six yards on the carry. Well, right now, as we see it, the offensive line of Lewiston Porter is winning the battles in there. Definitely, the, the Lancers are moving the ball down the field well. A nice mix with Burns. They went to Schoen on the previous play, and, and they go back to Burns again, and, again, and they're picking up at least five, six yards a carry on these, on these runs. It's working well. Tracy gives to Schuen once again. And Schuen, not as much success, but down close to first down yardage. Near the 20 yard line. They're gonna mark it at the 21. Steck on the tackle will bring up third down and a long one. I think that might be closer to two there. I don't know. It's a long one or a short two. All in the semantics. They split the backs. And they go to Burns. Burns gets, goes for the tough yardage, and uh, if he got across the 20, he got the first down. Yeah, his extra dive there at the end of the play got him the, got him the first down. Ryan Burns has five carries and almost 30 yards here in this ball game. And again, it's uh, been some determined running. He is running with some real authority today. Uh, something fired him up. Better hit for Harry Lawler with uh, getting Ryan Burns on the right. Uh, they, they've, had the ball for almost, they've had the ball for almost five minutes, Lou. A nice sustained drive. They pitch it back to Schuen. Schuen has to turn it upfield immediately, and he is driven back for a loss. Genevieve's out there along with number 55, Steve Steck. They smelled that play out and drilled. Schuen for a loss. Yeah, they sure did. It looked like there was a hole uh, more toward the left side, but the play was designed for Schuen to go to the right. Really nothing there but Grand Island defenders. Second down and 12 now. And Tracy brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He's got to look there at inside linebacker Greg Genovese. Both inside linebackers busting through on that play. They go to Burns again, and Burns is brought down by Anthony Scott, the left end. Well, just a couple for Burns. Uh, Newport moved the ball real well up until they got to, got to around the 20-yard line. But as you know, in that so-called red zone, the yards get tougher to gain, and uh, each yard is just a little longer once you get closer to that end zone, and it seems that uh, that's what's happening to Lewiston Porter. Third down and nine now for Lewiston Porter. It seemed like Scott was unblocked on that play. And Tracy drops back to pass. He's rushed by V. Rost and sacked. V. Rost throws him back to the 34 yard line. Frustration on the face of Tracy, but V. Rost came barreling through and made the big sack. That's gonna put a real hurting on the Lancer drive here. They've got fourth down, they got the ball out of the 30. They've got to get inside the 10 for a first down. Lou, the key to that play was that David Orsi was uh, supposed to pick up the block 
and uh, he was shaken off, and, and that was that, that's that, that's what caused the uh, sack of Tracy. Dave Tracy back. And Tracy will go back and punt the ball away for Lancers. A promising drive turns up empty. A kick is away into the lane. And he angles it. And that's, that's a great kick. That's going to bounce at about the, about the, the inside the five yard line. Three, a tremendous probably. kick by Tracy. Sure was. He's kicking into the wind. But uh, he knew that the key there was to get it close to that uh, coffin corner. About 35 yards. He did kick. exactly that. This is going to be marked just inside the five, so it's officially the four-yard line in a 36-yard punt for Newport, Dave Tracy. Well, right now, the Lancers are going to have to rely on their defense to stop Grand Island. The defense for Houston Porter has probably been the weaker part of their game this season, but uh, a big play could turn it around right here. But as you mentioned, Leo, the key was that they ate up so much time in that clock. Grand Island has the wind at their back only for a minute 20 here. And if Lewis and Porter can shut them down, they'll have good field position with the wind at their back. But Scott, Scott McDonald, McDonald on, the on the carry able to break a couple of tackles and give the Vikings some more breathing room here. Well, you know, Luport did uh, eat up a lot of time on the clock, but uh, the, the key thing is that they didn't come away with any points. And, and that, you know, eventually they're going to have to score some points. They work the ball well. They're just going to have to figure out what they can do inside the 20 on their next possession. Five yards on that carry. Scott McDonald gets the call the again, and he's brought down by Orsi. Not as uh, vocal a crowd as we had out here at Grand Allen a couple of weeks ago. I guess uh, winning breeds complacency. Also yeah, on the I guess they're a little, <laughs> just kidding. A, little, a little calm this week because they're getting ready. Uh, they're saving it up for next week when it's playoff time and uh, from what I hear there'll probably be a game out here third and two for Grant Allen McDonald on the keeper turns it upfield and Tracy's got him around the ankles but it looks to be a first down first down for Grant Allen that was a nice scrambling run he had a he got one good block out in front of him which actually sprung him to get the first down yardage but uh, McDonald moves around pretty good out of the backfield Got four yards on the carry and the first down. And Grand Allen able to get out of the shadow of their own end zone as time runs out here in the first quarter. They get the playoff. And McDonald on a play action pass. has a man wide open and it's a foot race to the end zone. Look out, he's gone. That, ladies and gentlemen, is an 82 yard touchdown pass off the play action to John Ben. Well, Newport was a team that needed the big play defensively, but it turns out that Grand Island, from the 16-yard line, they come up with a great play offensively, and uh, now they're ahead 12-0 as they go for the extra point. It's, it's going to be tough for Newport if they get in the hole early here like they have. Mike Bayo is in pursuit, but he was a couple of steps behind Benz, and Benz... Had nothing but green space in front of him, and his eyes lit up, and his legs got moving, and it spelled touchdown for Grand Island. 82-yard touchdown pass, and what a day for Bob McDonald. He has three completions and four attempts, two for touchdowns. And off Vero, then he gets the two-point two conversion. That makes it 14 to nothing in favor of Grand Island. That came on the last play of the first quarter, and we'll take a break. We're watching high school football on Adelphia Cable. Ladies and gentlemen, we need your cooperation. Please do not cut paper. To...
Well, Leo, I'm sure Lewis and Porter wish the clock would have expired in the first quarter because with two seconds left, Grant Allen snapped the ball and turned that play into an 82-yard touchdown and a 14-0 lead following with the two-point conversion over the Lewis and Porter Lancers. Grant Allen set to kick it off to start the second quarter. Now a line drive kick. Fielded by Schuin. Schuin at his own 15-yard line, gets out over the 25 and the 30, and uh, still going out of the 40-yard line. Schuin Before he has knocked out of bounds, they officially spotted at the 42. Well, Lou, Newport's going to start with good field position after that touchdown. And uh, as we were talking, as we went to the break, you know, one of the, the key thing for Grand Island was it was a big touchdown to put them out in front. But Newport, you know, they, they still have to be happy that before their last offensive series, they moved the ball Pushed well until they got inside 42. the 20. So, you know, First if they can keep the confidence in their Grand offense Allen, and come up with some points nine. before halftime, they're still in it. We saw them. They were down last week by two touchdowns, and they came back to tie against Tonawanda in the first half. They were down 14 nothing and came back to lead at the half, and they complete a pass out here to Mizaki. Tracy finds his favorite target for 12 yards and a first down into Grand Island territory. 12 yards on the catch. John Mazaki comes into this game as the number one receiver for Lewiston Porter. He had 10 catches on the year for 188 yards. That's an 18.8 yard average. He also has a couple of uh, made that just one touchdown. Well, the few games that we've seen them against Niagara Falls and Tonawanda, Mazaki's made some key catches in, in both of those games to keep the Lancers in it. I don't understand here, Leo. They're bringing the ball back. It was, it was a flag down that we didn't see. Okay, it was behind some of those Lewiston Porter players, and it's going to go against Grand Island. And uh, the flag is going to be bigger than the penalty, so they're going to take the penalty. It's a personal foul. And they take the penalty to gain the extra 15 yards, extra five yards. It's a 15-yard penalty, and the catch was was good for about 12. A smart move. Got to get, got to get all the yards you can. That's the name of the game here. Puts the ball on the 43, first and ten. They go to Schuin. Schuin cracks the 40-yard line and is brought down at the 36. McGlisco and Genevieve on the stop, but Schuin able to shake free for seven yards. Well, that was a, a nice uh, first down carry by Luport, and on their last series we saw the same thing, running uh, pretty, pretty consistently. The key is that they got to get in the end zone. Tracy with those bright green sneakers, hands off. Again and again. nowhere to go for Ryan Burns that time. Burns maybe got it to the 35. Let's see how they spot it. If he was lucky, they pretty much closed the gap on him there. What do you think of those neon green sneakers, Lou? I don't know. Uh, everything kind of seems to be getting neon yeah. these days. Everywhere you go, people are starting to wear neon clothes. We saw them more than the, the summertime, but I guess today is more of a summery type day than you normally see. I don't, I don't know how well they'd work in mud. <laughs> well, you wouldn't notice it after, after a while. Schuin carries and looks Schuin to have a first down before he's brought down by Genevieve and Scott McDonald. But uh, Schuin has the ball to the 31-yard line and first down for Lewis and Porter. Who the Lancers continue to move the football, and Gene Masters looking on. Grand Island head coach he has another Division Three championship. Hey, Gene Masters has been coaching here for over 30 years. I'm not exactly sure how many. I don't know if you're uh, if you're up on that, but I know he's been here for around 30 years. Well, I didn't bring the book with me this week. They swing it out to Schuin, and Schuin catches the pass, turns it upfield, inside the 30-yard line to the 27. It's a gain of four on the play. Three yards on the play. Second down and six, ten minutes remaining here in the first half. And Grant Allen leading the Lewiston Porter, 14 to nothing. Uh, two touchdown passes from Bob McDonald. Tracy brings his wideouts to the near side. Mazaki and Tracy and splits his backfield. Play action pass, gets protection, throws long to the end zone, and a man is there over the outstretched hands of Tracy. Tracy went inside and outside and did the zigzag, and that therefore did not come under the football. By inches. He missed that one by inches. That was close. Kind of a close, but no cigar. Watch if you can see it on the replay it here. He circles around. He got a good that. block. The quarterback got a good block there to get that ball away. You don't really see it, but he had already turned inside once to look for the ball and then had to turn all the way back around his body. And that kind of stuff slows you down just enough to make you miss that ball over your outstretched arms. 
Third down and seven, and they go to the halfback to Schuin, and Schuin is grabbed by the shirt and dragged down by Brett, Brett Virost. Well, now they're in a uh, tough situation here with the fourth down play. They, they wanted the pass for the touchdown. You know, they would have loved to have had that. And now the third down run, which uh, really didn't go for much. But uh, they're in a similar situation to the last drive. They, they kind of move the ball well, and they get stuck at the end when it gets close to the end zone. Two new receivers in for the Lancers. Mazaki and went out, as did Tracy. And he had two new wideouts as Tracy looks to throw. He's looking for Russell, and it's intercepted. Second interception in the game by Feeney. He dropped the ball out of the end zone. But I think they're going to give him credit for that pickoff and bring the ball out to the 20-yard line on the touchback. Here's the replay. Great play by Tom Feeney. Okay, we're going to see uh, Tracy throw the ball up deep into the end zone. It really was not a good pass. He kind of hung it and, 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 and floated it deep. Probably got caught up in the wind, maybe. And uh, Feeney comes down with the interception in second and eight of four. They're going to come away with no points again. Would have been better if Feeney had dropped the ball, but taking no chances, he made the interception. And now Grand Allen takes over at their 40 rather than out over the, at their 20, excuse me, rather than out over their 30 yard line. Well, I think instinctively you catch the ball. You see it there, you just try to catch it. And also Scott McDonald. Scott McDonald gets the carry, gets it out near the 25-yard line on first down carry. 8.42 remaining in the first half, and Grand Allen having their way today, leading it 14 to nothing. Lewis and Porter have been able to move the football, but not cash in. Deep in Grand Allen territory. Grand Allen, on the other hand, Lewis and Porter gearing up to stop the run and loading up the line of scrimmage. Grand Allen has used two play action passes for touchdowns. Let's see how Lewis and Porter defenses them on this series. We don't have the exact numbers, but Newport's really ready. Oh, look out, Troy Thomas. Troy Thomas, Troy Thomas the out near the 40-yard line. He was brought down by Schuin. Schuin made a touchdown-saving tackle there. 13 yards for Thomas and almost a lot more. Yeah, they almost had another big play, but the tackle by Schuin saved that. Troy Thomas last week was the driving force in the division-winning Victory over timeout Maryville with three touchdowns. Lewiston Porter takes a timeout here. Stops the clock with 8.06. Remaining in the first half, and the Vikings out in front by 14 points. And uh, if you're Harry Lawler, you're concerned. You, you came up with a game plan designed to stop the Grand Allen running attack and force them to throw, and then Grand Allen burns you with a couple play-action passes. You have to be a little more honest defensively now. Yeah, he, he's concerned about that, but he's also got to be frustrated offensively also as teams move the ball well, yet uh, they still got to make zero up on the scoreboard, so he's going to have to do something to change that. Dave Buda, Mike Wise, Ray Harper. Lewis and Porter coming into this game in Division Three allowed the most points of any team, 156. They also have scored the most, 125. Grant Allen. Second in scoring with 115 points, and as you might expect for the division leader, they've only allowed 57 points. Kind of an anomaly in the division if you look at Williamsville North. They've only allowed 63 points, but their offense abysmal, 39, and that's why they're just ahead of Lewis and Porter at 1-6. and six. <laughs> Rest of the division pretty well balanced. They go inside the handoff, and McDonald breaking all kinds of tackles, and he's going to go all the way. Scott McDonald broke through four tackles and turns it into a six. 61-yard touchdown run. Wow, what a run. That's all individual effort there by Scott McDonald as he just charged through the Lewport defense, breaking, uh, I think you said about four tackles. I'm not sure exactly how many, but anybody that got a hand on him couldn't hang on. Look at this. We're going to see it here. You count the tackles he breaks. Hurdles some people, breaks some tackles, and once he breaks that line of scrimmage again, Lewis and Porter up to defense against the run. No safety back there. A lot of speed, Lou, though. I mean, as he was charging through, he broke those tackles, and then when he squirted free, he had enough speed that he outran everybody. Scott McDonald's going to roll into the end zone untouched. Another two-point conversion. And that looked easy. Again, Lewis and Porter went for the play fake inside. McDonald able to roll around the corner. It's 22 to nothing. An impressive offensive display by the Division III champion, Grand Island Vikings. Big plays, big plays for the last two touchdowns uh, for, for Grand Island. 
And actually, if you look at the time of possession, I think Newport's had the ball longer. It's just that when Grand Islands uh, had it, they uh, they did something with it real quick. That's uh, getting it into the end zone. A lot of time left here in the second quarter. Seven minutes and 53 seconds. And Leo Lewis and Porter has been a team all year long that uh, despite their losing record uh, and some difficulty in ball games has never given up. But you really have to feel that this Lancer team is pretty much demoralized now. They came out here and on their first couple of possessions were able to move the ball offensively. But Grant Allen has victimized them with big plays. And despite how windy it is today, the wind is out of the Lancer sails right now. Well, Coach Harry Lawler is going to find out a lot about the players he has along that sideline this afternoon. See uh, how many of them run for the bus and uh, how many of them hang in and stick this thing out and try to make a big comeback. Ball bounces at the 15. Schumann picks it up at the 9. He brings it out. And dangerous as he is, gets out over the 35-yard line. I'd have to say, out of all the teams that we've seen this year, I'd have to say Jeff Schuwen is probably the best return man from all the games that we've done. Well, he has great speed, and the one thing I like about Schuwen returning the football is he's a no, he's a no-nonsense runner. He doesn't zig back and forth and look for a touchdown in every play. He knows that if you bring the ball straight up the field, all you need is a crack with that tremendous speed, and it turns into a big play for you. Tracy gives to Ryan Burns. Burns still running with determination, gets it out over the 40 for five yards. Well, once again, uh, Lewis and Porter starting out on a first down, the same way they've done uh, all afternoon, and, and they pick up five yards on the run to Burns. Burns has successful. Burns hasn't had the year that he had last year. He was slowed quite a bit by injuries in the early going, and Lewis and Porter not to make excuses, but their team has been decimated by injuries all year long. At one point, I think at this point, they're still eight players short of what they started the year. Passes incomplete. It was over the head of Schuen and short of another possible intended receiver out here, number 31, Rob Moss. Yeah, I think that one was probably thrown to Schuen then. There was really no one around Schuman, but the, the pass wasn't there, so I guess it really didn't matter. He was open, but he had no chance at the ball. Third down, and we'll call it six for Lewis and Porter. Jeff Millar checking out for Grant Allen on the plate. As Tracy goes to Schuin, Schuin turns it upfield, first down and more, Schuin at the 40, the 35, the 30, and you're not going to catch Schuin, he's in for the touchdown. Schuin Jeff to. Schuin, 60 Schuin. yards himself. What were you saying before about uh, Jeff Schuin being the no-nonsense runner? You said if he found a crack, uh, he could break one, and you saw it right there. You, you kind of called that one a little ahead of when it happened. Jeff Schuin, the big play man himself. There it is. He breaks through the line of scrimmage, and right there he reads Moss very well. As Feeney has turned to the inside, Schuin takes it to the outside and turns it into a touchdown. And it gets him back in this contest. At least now Lewis and Porter knows that they can get some points on the board against Grand Island. Gives the Lancer six points. And going back to the point you have made earlier, if Lewis and Porter was able to cash in, they drove it deep into Grand Island territory on their previous Two possessions, uh, one turned away by uh, a big sack that forced a punt, and of course Feeney has the two interceptions. And that's why Lewis and Porter trails in this game, 22 to six, because neither defense really playing spectacularly at this point. Feeney has played well for Grand Island. Yeah, that's probably been the difference. That, that, those two interceptions have probably been the difference, actually, because Lewport has been able to move the ball on the ground. And as you saw there with a long touchdown, that helped him out. Of course, that puts the hands right ball back into the hands of Grant Allen. Not the ball control drive you want for Lewison, but right now you can't afford ball control. You've got to put points up in a hurry to get whatever, back to this ball game. Whatever works. They'll go for the two-point conversion, and they give it to Ryan Burns, and Burns is grabbed by Genovese, but... He Greg took Genovese into the end zone, and it's a two-point conversion. It makes that the score Grand Island 22 and Lewiston Porter 8. Well, on that two-point conversion, you saw Ryan Burns running straight ahead like a bull, put his head down, and Greg Genovese had a hold of him, but he couldn't stop Burns with that momentum. I guess that answers the question I was posing before Lewiston Porter took the kickoff, Leo. 
And the one you posed as well. Well, they can score, finally. Well, they didn't run for the bus either. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. I wasn't quite sure what you were referring to there, but uh, <laughs> they didn't. And uh, there's got to be some confidence on that sideline now, 22 to 8. The key is that now they know they can put points on the scoreboard. The first two drives, they had trouble, and they couldn't come up with a big play. But they've kind of gotten over the hump now. Lewiston Porter to kick it off, number 70, Ryan Jeffords. Jeffords tried to tee it up from the 45, but the official spotted it and moved him back to the 40. Man, Ryan nice try Jeffers if you can get away with it. Will kick off from the Every little bit helps. Back for Grand Island, Tom Beatty, John hey, it's the last game of the season. Thomas. you got to try anything. <laughs> 6.46 left to go in this first half. Feeney, Thomas, and John Benz, the deep backs for Grant Allen to receive this kick. Let's see if Lewiston Porter can kick it out of the end zone as Grant right. Allen has done with the wind at their backs. A line drive kick rolls into the end zone off the hands of Benz. It's a touchback. The ball force carried it in the end zone. It wasn't brought in by Grant Allen, so therefore it is a touchback. Back on the play. Well, you'll see the Vikings will be starting at their, at their own 20. They've had some big plays offensively. It's almost like they like to have a long way to go. It seems that way. They'll take over on the 20. 6.46 remaining in a first half filled with offense, but not really moving at a tremendous pace. First down and 10 for Grand Island. First quarter moved quickly. The second quarter has moved much more slowly. A lot of big plays. McDonald under center. He has one setback, McDonald. And the quarterback keeps it, gets out over the 20 yard line. Then he is driven back. Four white shirts out there. Led by Brochet and Matt Tackentine. As we get a look at Harry Lawler, the head coach of the Newport Lancers, looking for a victory this afternoon. Got some shorts out there on the sidelines. Yes, it is November, folks. How about that grand but it's a great day for football. A little windy, but temperatures near 70 degrees and plenty of sunshine. Play action pass again. And look out, Genevieve. wide open, and Genovese is gone. Four people chasing him, they'll never catch him. Another big play for Grand Island. Yeah, 78 they, yards. They had four people chasing him, but the closest guy wasn't within 10 yards of him. As Genevieve caught that ball and just tore away from anyone on the Leuport defense and went in easy for that touchdown. Leo, have you ever seen anything like it? Bob McDonald is four out of five passing today three touchdowns. with three touchdowns and over 170 yards. Right. We've only played a quarter and a half. Long reception. Well, yards. he's certainly known where to throw the ball today and who to throw the ball to. But uh, well, most, of the, most of these catches, like the last two touchdowns to uh, Benz and the one right now, they were uh, long runs after the ball was caught. They go for two and they successfully and convert it. Is good. Anthony Scott. Anthony Scott on the carry, and it's 30 to 8 here in the second quarter in favor of Grand Island. This one is going to look like a basketball score by the time we're done, Leo. I think Lewiston Porter is going to put up a few more scores today the way they've moved the football, but Grand Island is taking it out in big chunks. Yeah, they sure are. They're scoring quick, and that's the key to this one. Newport seems as though it's going to take them a while to to add up some points because of the way their offense moves. Grand Island just gets them, you know, at the uh, at the instant. With 5.56 remaining in this first half, Grand Island in dominating form. This has really been, uh, we, we expected a, a good offensive game today. James Criddle will kick off. Lewiston Porter has been victimized so often by the play fake. Two minutes back. Three touchdown passes off of play fakes here in the first half, and the secondary still has not been kept honest. They're coming up to support the run and getting burned by the pass. Dave Tracy brings it up. Has knocked out of bounds near the 35-yard line where Luke Ward will start first and 10. We'll see how they react to that last big play by the Vikings. 
Yeah, it seems like their te their confidence is really, their confidence and their willingness to go out there and play this afternoon are really being tested by Grand Island. Here come the Lancers. And all the starters still in there, including Tracy, the quarterback, who gives to Ryan Burns, and Burns last week with 63 yards for a score. And I'm sure that a lot of the players are thinking, not trying to be selfish sounding, Leo, but individually, they want to break a big play, too. Yeah, they sure do. Why not? I, I, I'd have to say you're right there. Newport in the hurry-up offense. They throw it out here. It's complete, and breaking tackles is John Mazaki, and he's out near first down, a little short. He got six yards on the catch. It'll bring up third down and two. Well, on both of those last two plays, uh, Greg Genovese, the man who scored the last Grand Island touchdown, has been right in there on those tackles. Lewiston Porter in the hurry-up offense. Tracy will keep it, turns it upfield, and he dives for the first down out to the 47-yard line. Tackle by Troy Thomas and Scott McDonald. Troy Thomas credited for the stop along with Scott McDonald. You got the McDonald twins on this team, Scott and Bob, and they're both great players. And there was going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on one of those McDonald twins, as I'm talking about. He uh, wouldn't keep his mouth shut, and he's going to be flagged for 15 yards. Well, Scott McDonald. Grand Island was such a big lead. Uh, there's there's no reason for that at all. They should be a pretty disciplined well, team Grand Island. that they are. But uh, there's no reason for that at this point in the game. That, the is, a, being what it is. that is a that is a dead ball foul that should be marked right here from the 47-yard line with 57 uh, at the 47 with the 15 yards tacked on from here. Since it came after the conclusion of the play. So that again will march the ball deep into Grand Island territory. It will give Lewiston Porter the ball at the Grand Island 37 yard line. They've been down here on just about every possession. Well, and again, they go to the hurry up offense. Tracy standing at the 45 in the shotgun. He takes a real deep drop. And now he throws. Throws the Mazaki, overthrows Feeney on the coverage. And now we've got another late hit on Grand Allen. There's going to be another personal foul. Troy Thomas being admonished by the official. And this is the second time they have roughed up Tracy and drew an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. That's the third unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, personal foul penalty against Grand Island. Well, you know what? It's good that the referee's taking care of this because there's really no reason for it. I mean, they're ahead 30 to eight. What are they trying to prove out there? Being a little over aggressive on the quarterback. Of course, you're taught to go in there and send a message to the quarterback, but you can't take a couple of steps and drill him after he releases the ball. They'll allow you momentum, but they don't want you throwing him to the ground well after the ball has been thrown. So it's first down for Lewiston Porter as they uh, continue to set the chains and mark the ball. They'll mark the ball about the 21 yard line. Now Tracy seems to be moving under center for this play. Lewiston Porter in the hurry up offense. And Grant Allen giving up 30 yards in personal fouls. The Vikings lead at 30 to 8 at this point. Five minutes and counting remaining in the first half. Schuen to the outside. Schuen breaks the tackle. Schuen gets Schuen down inside the 15 yard line. Well, as he cut around the outside, Jeff Schuen used his the speed to his advantage to pick up the yard. If someone with, uh, who might, might not have been as fast as Schuen would, would have been strung out for probably maybe one or two yard gain. That's it. Lewiston Porter goes back to the huddle ball, spotted at the 14-yard line. They need to get to the 11 for a first down. It's second down here. They go to Burns. Burns off the right side, cuts it upfield, down near the five. Eight yards for Ryan Burns. First down, well, Lewiston Porter with a first, first and goal. goal. And, uh, you know, for them to get a score before halftime, they'd still be in this one. Eugene Masters on the Grand Island sideline. He could be a coach who is actually unhappy with his team's performance, even though they're leading 30 to 8, because Lewiston Porter has moved the ball at will. Shoe in off the left side. Touchdown on touch. Easy. 
On touch, Jeff Schuett, his second touchdown. Second touchdown of the day. Six yards for the score there. He made that one look easy, Luke. That was just... Didn't look like the, the Grand Island defense really dug in for that one. 65-yard drive for Lewiston Porter. You know, he had a nice block by Ryan Burns to the inside, but there was one Grand Island defender that, that, that had a chance at him. I didn't exactly catch the number. It really didn't look like he tried too hard. This feels a lot like the Tonawanda Lewis and Porter game of last week, Leo. We've had four drives result in four touchdowns, and I'm talking about the last four. We haven't seen Two so many, How many punts? Has there been any punts in this game? Do we have? Well, we had Lewis and Porter with the great punt that Oh yeah, the Grand Allen taking over on their own four. Grand Allen had an 82-yard pass play for a touchdown. Defense. Grand Allen has not come. They have scored a touchdown every time they have touched the football. They lead it 30 to 14 at the moment, and Lewis and Porter thinking about how they will go for a conversion here. They went for it to the first time and were successful. And Lewis and Porter is uh, moving the ball at will on the ground. Well, Ryan Burns and Jeff Schuett are running very, very effectively, and uh, Tracy is keeping them off balance on the play calling of Harry Lawler on the sideline with enough passes. Yeah, they're working a nice mix, Schuett and Burns, just, just taking turns at it. And, uh, you know, Tracy, as you said, keeping them honest with, with the passes. But, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I tell you, if Newport had a pretty good defense, they would have really made a run for it in this division. If they had a defense, they would be the team to beat in this yeah, division. Yeah, probably right. They throw, and the two-point conversion is good. Tracy to Tracy. And, Leo, I don't want to sound like I'm gushing too much, but if there's any team that my respect grows for throughout this season, it's Lewis and Porter. And the team doesn't have a win. They're down in this game 30 to 8 at one point, 22 to nothing, and yet they continue to move the ball down the field. They continue to work hard. You know, their, their chances of winning this game aren't very good at all. They're playing the division winner, and yet this team is still up and is still working hard. It's 30 to 16 right now. They're not out of it. My respect grows. It's got to be a little frustrating though for their coaching staff because they know, they know the offense can move the ball. I mean, we've seen it in every game we've done. It's just that they can't hold the other team. But that's just the, the problem in a nutshell. I mean, nice it's, e it's easy to see. But we keep talking about it, but that, that's that's what it is. What more can we say? Well, they certainly are an entertaining football team to watch. You, you don't get cheated in the offense when you're watching Luport, Tonawanda, or Grand Island. That's true, but of course last night uh, it was that game uh, North Tonawanda beat Tonawanda and the score was only 14-12, so the Warriors pretty much got shut down that one. Beanie at his own 11-yard line, brings it out over the 20, and he's tackled at the 25-yard line. Backless out there on the stop, you can pick him out. He also has those neon green shoes and maybe even the socks out there. 25-yard line, that's where Grand Allen will take over first and 10. 4.02 remaining in the uh, first half, and that's an eternity for the Quick Strike Vikings. Yeah, they've got enough time to score. And Lewis and Porter get the ball and maybe, maybe get first another. They might be able to get two. The Vikings load the formation to the left, and they have one back. It goes to him, McDonald, and he's hit right away. Able to get back to the line of scrimmage. It was hit right away by David Orsi. Well, not much there. Uh, they kept it simple. And, uh, Luport was right on the ball. I actually, we want to make a correction there. It was 56. Orsi's on the sideline, so that's 56 Ryan Bush who made the tackle. Of course, he's on the sidelines going, thanks for the call, but it wasn't me. McDonald turns it upfield, and he gets it out over the 30, wrapped up out here by Backless. You know, it looked like he was going to just, uh, you know, run out of bounds and take it out of bounds, but he, he cut to the inside to pick up a few yards, and it was actually a good play. Out of bounds stops the clock with 2.54 remaining here in the first half. And... Seven-yard pickup on the play. Third down, and... Close enough to measure. 
What do you think? So we you? shouldn't even say third down. You think they've got it marked sleep? third down, but it's close enough to measure. Here come the I think they're going to lull them to sleep with the run like they uh, did the last few times and go for the big one. Well, they've certainly set up the big pass quite often in this ball game as the chain crew comes all the way across here. You're going to get a can't get a better look at it than that from Joel Barone, and Joel shows you that they are just about a length of a football short. And yeah, that Joel Barone, he's really on the ball down there with that, that sideline camera. He's, he's really on the ground there. Yeah, That's true. He travels all card. over from, uh, from goal line to goal line. Good time to tell you about the crew who works these games for you. Today, Fred Calandrelli in the truck. Also, you'll find Stacy Adams working. Paula. Paula has that new last name we can't forget, but we sometimes do. Yes, it's uh, some one of our Just colleagues. got married. Yes. Paula Lori. Lori. Lori, that's it. How could we forget Lori, right? right. Bob, Bob Lori has been along with us in some of the games, and Art Eberhardt and Leo Sinise. Steve Leopold, not with us today, but in the truck often. Tony DiPasquale. We've had a sprinkling this year. Yeah, who, who have we missed? I think we got everybody there. And B. Ross over the 40-yard line gets the first down and gets six on the carry. That's the uh, first carry I have for B. Ross to, on my own official statistics. I think so. I think it's the first time you called his number. First and ten for the Vikings at their own 41-yard line. 239 remaining. You know, you can't let up if you're Grand Island. Even though you've put up 30 points and a half, you're only up by 14 against a dangerous Lewiston Porter offense. Inside they go, and Anthony that's Scott on the carry. Anthony Scott churning inside Lewiston Porter territory just on the other side of the 50. Well, I'm just waiting for one of these plays. Uh, I want to see McDonald drop back, and he's going to unload again. It's got to happen. I mean, they've, been, they've done it every time they had the ball. Maybe they want the clock to wind down a little more. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Maybe they'll get it down to two seconds again like that like at the end of the first quarter. There they go. Back to pass. This time double coverage out there. And he beats the coverage and the pass is caught. And look out. It's another touchdown. Double coverage doesn't matter. It's unbelievable. John Benz, a 50-yard touchdown catch. I didn't call that. I didn't know that was going to happen. I just took a guess. Unbelievable. Touchdown. Reception of the day. Bob McDonald's I'll tell you what. Double McDonald's coverage out there. And he just beats both of them. You know, that ball was thrown perfectly right into the hands of over the over the shoulder. Bob catch McDonald's the bends, and then he did the rest after that because it looked like it looked like he was going to be tackled. We've got unofficial stats here that uh, Bob McDonald has 239 yards passing in the first half so far. We're, we're, he has five completions and four touchdowns. What's that going to do for your quarterback rating? Well, it can't hurt it. I, you know, and now he's that. rolling out on the two-point conversion. Throws but wide not. open. Viros <laughs> makes the two-point conversion catch. It's 38-16. to 16. Pretty much and Bob McDonald. Leo, I mean, you know, we have an offensive player of the game. Well, Lou, Bob McDonald's going to be the offensive player of the year for this performance. Today. You got him four for five, four touchdowns, okay? He's... He's thrown, he just threw for that two-point conversion. He ran in a two-point conversion on his own. We've got to and tell you something about McDonald do? in a moment, but right now we want to tell you about the two Maximum Effort Award. So Players from like Lewiston Porter are eligible for the Maximum Effort Award, sponsored by Allstate's Joel Holka. Call him at your neighborhood Lewiston office for your insurance needs. At the end of the season, a team election will determine the player who displays maximum effort in practices and during games. This player will have a positive attitude, a good work ethic, and serve as an inspirational leader. Winners from LaSalle, Newport, Niagara Falls, and Niagara Wheatfield will be announced on Adelphia Cable Channel 3 at the conclusion of the season. We want to welcome our viewers on the Jones Cable System watching today's football game. It's really been a pleasure. 38-16, to Grand Island as they kick off the Lewiston corner. They let it roll so Schuwen can pick it up, but he picks it up at his own five-yard line, and after chasing it down, Van Halen coverage able to get down and kick it to table. about the 20-yard line. Well, it wasn't really an easy kick to handle, but Schuwen probably made the most of it getting it out to the 20. 
18-yard return by Schumann. Four touchdown passes on five completions for Bob McDonald, who has thrown the ball six times. A little right. And he is playing uh, with, right we are told, centers. a bad left shoulder. It's obviously not his passing shoulder. Well, wasn't it the Niagara Wheatfield game where it was uh, supposedly reported that he, he played that game with a separated shoulder? In the first half. Unbelievable. That's all we could say. Ryan Burns takes it out Burns, uh, close to the 29-yard line. That's Burns' 10th carry, and he got Stop seven down yards down on that. So once it, it seems like play play every time Newport three. gets the ball, that first play, that first play from scrimmage, they pick up six, seven yards. They've been able to move it well. Tracy throwing out here for Schuen, and Feeney almost had his third interception of the game. He's on the ground admonishing himself because he almost had number three. Yeah, he was waiting for that one. He just couldn't bring it down, though. He was in the right he was in, a, was in the right place at the right time and uh, played the ball well, but just couldn't bring it in. Here's the replay as uh, the ball just hung up there. Third down and three, 58 seconds remaining in the first half. Now the timeout is called on the field. An injured Grand Allen player being helped off. That's uh, number 42 limping off, uh, Sean McClellan. Shotgun formation. They go to the shotgun formation on third and three, looking for the first down of much more. They snap to the short man, and I don't know if he got there. I don't think he's even close. Shotgun now, Donald after the whistle, the there's another late flag, and, and I Jeremy think they're Brown gonna tell the flag for uh, an illegal push on Lewiston Porter. Yep, that one's push. going against the Lancers. We saw earlier, that it looked like, uh, you know, Grand Island had, I believe, two or three in a row personal foul penalties, but this one's going to go against the Lancers, and the uh, frustration might be setting in. Brings up fourth down now. They were short on the run, and the illegal push is declined by Grand Island. And Lewis and Porter in a punting situation here with 50 seconds remaining. Seems like the wind is easing up just a little bit if you look at the flag. It kicks up with gusts, but is not the steady, strong wind that we had at the beginning of the game. Yeah, when this when it, when the wind kicks up, this the broadcast booth kind of sways a little bit. Tracy gets a good high kick away, drives him back to his 34-yard line. McDonald is pushed out of bounds by Mark Bernardo at the 41. Return of seven yards. There's the booth that we're in. Small, cozy accommodation here in Grand Island. When that wind blows, it moves. Thirty seconds left. Let's see what uh, Gene Masters sends out there for the play. Will he just run out the clock, or will he go with the play-action pass once again, leading 38 to 16? Power Lewis and Porter. I'd go into a prevent defense. I think here. Yeah, it probably would be the safe move. Grant Allen is looking to throw, and Benz is out here. Benz is going to go long. They throw it to him, and it's over his head. Pass intended to Benz, incomplete. McDonald was telling Benz to turn up field. He was double covered again. He threw an incompletion. Grant Allen not looking to sit on the ball here. Wow. I think that is his first incompletion since his first pass of the game. The other five right. were completions, four for touchdowns. Stops the clock with 23 seconds left. Gene Masters. I think now they might run it, Lou. I think they were. Yeah. I think they wanted to give it give it one chance downfield, and now they might run it out. Not content with the 22 point lead still being in the first half. They send Benz out wide in the slot. And McDonald back to pass. Backless has a heavy rush on him. Thomas receives the dump off pass. Thomas breaks some tackles. And for all that work, gains a yard. Good effort, though. Dennis Cutlip eventually made the tackle. So it'll be third down and nine, and timeout is called by Grand Allen. Five seconds left, so they're going to take one more crack at it. I tell you, they're definitely not satisfied with this 22-point uh, advantage. That, that's, that's for sure. Well, it's a message that Masters is sending to his players. Our defense hasn't always...
played as well as he would like to see it, is what he's thinking. And uh, I don't think he's going to come up throwing the ball in the second half, but with still two quarters of football left, he is not going to just lay down either. Well, that's After one of the reasons the why they won the division. Gene Masters has been around a long time, as we talked about before, and uh, I'm sure he has the respect of all of his players because he's got a winning tradition here at Grand Island. That was uh, McClellan on the bench, a little ice pack there on the knee. And they go to the handoff on the final play of the half. It's good Seven for under. good Let's yardage. In the Lewport territory at the 47 yard line, 11 yards, and that'll end the first half. Second quarter took a long time to play, and it was a pretty good offensive display for both teams. But Grand Island, with the bigger plays and the most points on the board, as we go to halftime, they lead it 38 to 16. Leo Sinise and I, Lupinesa, will be back with the second half in just a moment. Enjoy the halftime show by the first. for the second half of today's high school football action. Grand Island hosting Lewiston Porter. And at the outset of the game, we said that Lewiston Porter had to keep Grand Island's offense on the field. They had to have a ball control offense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Grand Island has only run 14 offensive plays, and yet they lead it 38 to 16. Yeah, what do we got, five touchdowns and 14 plays? Is that what we come up with? That is an awesome percentage, and it's led by Bob McDonald, the cornerback. Four of six passing, excuse me, five of six passing for four touchdowns, 224 yards. It's definitely having a, a career afternoon. They is have ran the ball seven times. They have passed the ball seven times. They have... 96 yards on the ground rushing. It's just been an awesome offensive display by the Grand Island Vikings. Lewiston Porter, on the other hand, has also moved the ball effectively in this ball game. And they have scored 16 points on the best defense in Division Three, and very possibly could have had quite a bit more. They've been in Grand Island territory almost all afternoon. Yeah, they've picked up a lot of, a lot of yards themselves, mainly on the ground. Uh, two interceptions by Tom Feeney. Uh, really uh, stalled Lewiston Porter, and, and also they, they just seem to have trouble once they get inside the uh, once they get inside the 20-yard line. But once again, they move the ball well. As we watch the bees crawl around here in the here in the press box, we have the <laughs> leftovers from summer, the the They're drunk being bees and wasps awakened by today's warm temperatures. Jeff Schuwen has 12 carries and 96 yards for Lewiston Porter. Ryan Burns, who has been running with a great deal of enthusiasm today, 10 carries. 455 yards. Schuwen's big run, a 60-yard touchdown run. And we ended the half with five... Well, there, I'll just say there was a run in that half of five consecutive possessions for touchdowns. The only thing that stopped Grand Bob Island was the clock. The they ran out of time on their last possession. Yeah, that's true. It's been up and down, just like a... pretty much like a college basketball game. Although Luport is uh, definitely on the short end at this point. For Luport, number 27, Jeff Schuwen. Schuwen back deep to receive, receive the second half kickoff. Lewis and Porter will move from left to right on your screen into the wind. And kicking off, Scott McDonald has booted a couple into the end zone already with the wind at his back for touchbacks. Now the star of the second half. And the second oh, half is underway. A line drive kick will be fielded by Schuen at his own 
two yard line and he gets it out to the 15 and not much more just the 16 yard line on that return the bouncing football allowed Grand Allen's coverage team to get downfield well also shooing pretty sure handed down there handled that ball well and uh, took it at the two as you said that's not a bad return though all things considered on that one but, uh, the Lancers are still pinned in pretty deep as they start the second half and uh, I think they desperately need to get on the board quick if they have a chance of getting back in this one. Tracy comes out and his backs are Schuen and Burns. And Schuen gets the carry. He has a hole, but it closes Schuen quickly. Troy Thomas, Troy Thomas makes the tackle. They kick Brett Viros to the outside. Looked like an opening, but Troy Thomas came over and filled it quickly. And only a yard there for Schuen. Yeah, he didn't get much on that one, running on that field, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty much filled with uh, paper confetti down around that end. I guess they were they were telling the crowd not to throw anything out there, but Great turns out nobody listened. High school and they keep the back split and the wideouts. They throw a quick out to Mazaki. Mazaki over the 20 yard line and That's makes the Mizaki. catch and is dribbling back. Feeney and, and Bernadoni. Feeney has picked off a couple of passes already today. That gain about five yards. It'll bring a third down in. Just shy of five yards for first down. Oh, well, that was a pretty nice play there, the uh, throw, throw to Mazaki. But it kind of left him left them out there on his own after he caught the ball. Nobody near him, and he couldn't pick up any extra yardage. Four yard gain on that pass. Brings up a third and five. There's a timeout on the field. The official talking to the Lewis and Porter huddle. And now he's going to go... Across the way, and uh, they're talking football again. <laughs> Harry Lawler over there He's got a couple of footballs in his hand. Okay, found a ball they like a little better. Well, Didn't we go through their needs a little better? Didn't we go through the same thing uh, last week, the Luport Tanawanda game? But then, uh, you know, it was a it was a very cold night, so there, there might have been a reason for a preference then. But today, there's a uh, no chill in the air. Possession down for Lewis and Porter here, and Tracy gives to Ryan Burns. Burns had no Burns support Tackle whatsoever. Troy, Troy, Thomas. Troy Thomas was there. Troy Thomas cut him down nicely, coming across the line, and uh, Loss of one on he play. got Burns before Burns even got started on that one. And a nice tackle Four right up. around the ankle. Fourth down and six. Pretty much fundamental defense there. Well, that'll bring the punter onto the field, Dave Tracy. To do the kicking, and he got away a couple of great punts in the first half. Dave Tracy back to punt. And back here we've got Anthony Thomas. Anthony Scott. And Anthony Scott, and the kick is blocked. It's taken by Scott McDonald. And Grand oh, Island scores. McDonald advances it into the end zone. Well, I'll tell you, that could be the death blow, Lou. It's a tough part of the field for me to see. I'm really looking at a PA yeah. system. And yeah, you are. And me too. <laughs> Both of us here. Looking at a big speaker. It took us a while to see what happened. There it is, Lou. Number one, I think that is, made the block. That's like Jay Mahan. Jay Mahan with the block. McDonald with the touchdown. Scott McDonald on the TD. That's his second today, I believe. And they've had so many, it's starting to lose track. Uh, things cannot get much worse for the Lancers at this point. It's now 44 to 16. Grand Island still has only run 14 offensive plays. <laughs> yeah, they didn't need an offensive play for that touchdown. <laughs> Well, let's see what they do. They've been going for two most occasions, and they've been doing it quite successfully. Yeah, I would say they really don't need it at this point, but if that's what they usually do, they might come out and do it again. Well, Grand Island will be going on to the Section 6 playoffs, and Lewiston Porter will be going on to high school basketball or some other endeavor. After this football game, Grand Island going to go in on a roll. They're going to kick the point after. It is up and through. And that makes it 45 to 16. Well, it's our last game of the year uh, here on Adelphia, Niagara. And uh, 
a blowout so far, 45 to 16, and it appears as though it's going to stay that way because it's going to be tough for Luport to come back from a, a 29 point deficit right now. And that block punt really hurt him, you know. I mean, they say say Tracy got off a good punt, they held him defensively. Maybe they were still in this thing, but that pretty much has to shut the door, even though there's a long time left. That's a pretty bitter pill to swallow. I just want to remind our viewers on Adelphi Cable that. Should any of the local teams make it into the Section 6 playoffs at Rich Stadium, we'll have television coverage of that ball game through our Adelphia International System and the Adelphia Sports Interconnect. Scott McDonald will kick off for Grand Island. McDonald to kick it off again. There's still 9.44 remaining here in the third quarter, and you kind of get the feeling, although Lewis and Porter has played hard, all game long, and they have responded to each and every Grand Island touchdown with a good offensive series that I kind of wish this one was over at this point. It's been a season to forget. Yeah, I, I'd have to say that. I, I asked Harry Lawler earlier in the week uh, if he was looking forward to next year and what he might do with this team. He says he hasn't really looked that far yet. He was just looking to today's game. Ray Tracy brings it out to the 33-yard line, and that's where the Lancers will start first and 10. Paul Versilio credited on the stop. And I think it's time we start to see a lot of substitutions on both time, uh, both sides, Leo. Well, if you want these rosters, I got them right next to me in case you want to <laughs> take a peek down there and uh, see who's in this ballgame, because I think we're going to be shuttling guys in and out. Well, Tracy returns at quarterback, and uh, the backs are... Still Burns and Schuin. Wideouts uh, for Lewis and Porter. We've got Rob Moss out here along with Sean McDermott. And now a flag as uh, movement on the Newport offensive line. The left tackle move. That was number 57. Troy, Tony uh, Reimer. I get the feeling this is going to be a long second half. Ball starts Newport. Well, if the teams throw the ball, it could be that way. I I don't think we're going to see Grand Island pass the ball too much more today. Well, there's really no need to. I don't think they, unless they really want to bury Luport, there's no reason for that. Bob McDonald came into the game today with five touchdown passes and six interceptions. He has thrown four touchdown passes today to give him nine on the year. Flags are down as Shuin tries to find something over the left side. The nine touchdown passes will put him behind uh, Ed Mahoney of North Tonawanda. Tompkins had eight going into that TNT game last night for Tonawanda. Who do we got there, Lou? Is that uh, number 72 for Grand Island, the uh, guy with the cast over here? Yeah, on the sidelines, uh, Waz, uh, we saw him have quite a game against uh, North Tonawanda, TJ Waz. This is Mike Waz, we assume his brother, on the sidelines today. Holding the call against Lewiston Porter will back them up and uh, the official spotting the ball inside the 20-yard line at the 19. It'll bring up first down, but they've got to get all the way out to their 43 for a first down. And so if we come back here next year, I have to tell them to move that speaker. I don't know if they'll li <laughs> I don't know if they'll listen to me, but hey, it's worth a try. Tracy back to pass. Oh, and off the fingertips of Burns. Burns is bumped out here by uh, Bob McDonald. But McDonald meant no malice out there, and. Tried to help Burns up. Burns just uh, lost his concentration there. Yeah. Understandable at this point. Yeah, I think McDonald kind of more or less ran hurt. into him than tried anything. Tracy has been racked up after the pass all game long. That time he was throwing under tackle and he is down. Mike Granada, the backup quarterback, also hurt a couple games ago when Tracy was out with a bad ankle. Yeah, Granada broke a collarbone. Now Tracy's hurt again, but uh, his brother Dave Tracy is the third string quarterback. You might see him get some action. Now this is Ray Tracy, he's the senior. Oh no, his brother Dave is the third stringer though. In case Ray second goes down. Second string today. Yeah, second <laughs> string today, but third string overall. We see a lot of brother combinations, it seems to me, uh, on these teams. Must have been a run on twins or Something, Something like that. Back. Yeah. You got the McDonald's here for Grand Island, which is pretty much they are twins. this game. Oh, yeah. Tracy's are just brothers, not died, but they're twins of any nature. And uh, Ray Tracy a little banged up trying to get up here. And is going to need some assistance getting off the field, it appears. Yeah, Ray Tracy's father, who gave us the birthday announcement last week, came up to me today and said, uh, there's no birthday. I thought he was going to... 
I thought it was uh, Dave's birthday this week or something when he came up to me. But he said, uh, no, nothing to announce this week. Just wanted to say hello. Well, he is walking off under his own power. That's a good sign. And it will be Dave Tracy taking over at quarterback. Well, Ray might be a little more dejected than hurt there as he walks off the field. It's got to be Second tough, down. Lou, when you go through a Dave whole season and, and, and you don't win a football game. And we really shouldn't dwell on that, but it, it just, you know, it's, it's got to be difficult. Come out every week and season ends and, and you didn't win. Schuin gets the call. A little dance, and he's out over the 25-yard line. By Troy Thomas. Thomas on the tackle. Thomas has had uh, quite a few tackles here in the second half already. I believe that's his third or fourth. Schuin got it out over the 26-yard uh, line, a gain of seven. Third down and still 16 yards to go. They've got to get to the 43, and the clock continues to run. That's a, a good sign anyway with eight minutes remaining in the sure third is. quarter. Actually, I think it's a good sign for both teams. Long way to go before we pick the offensive and defensive players of this game, but I'd have to say that Bob McDonald is uh, is a lock for the offensive player. Still working on that uh, defensive player, though. Tracy on the keep and nothing going there. And Steve He's driven back the sack of Tracy. by number 55, Steve Steck, another senior on this Grand Island team. Now, yeah, punting situation again for Lewis and Porter. Steve Steck has been in uh, quite a few tackles also this afternoon. Well, they got to get the ball off this time. Jay Moran, the junior, defensive end, got through and blocked the last punt attempt. Tracy, Tracy back, back to punt. try it again. To receive for Grand Island, Anthony Scott and William Preston. Anthony Scott. And a timeout, timeout is called against Lewis and Porter. Well, what are they going to do here? I mean, the, the key thing would probably be to kick the ball away. I don't see the reason uh, why they would call a timeout here. It seems like what they would want to do would be pretty simple. Well, they may have not been set in the uh, formation the way they wanted to, and they certainly don't want to have another punt blocked. Uh, even though it's 45 to 16, you you don't want to be further embarrassed. Lewis and Porter has played this game with a lot of pride to this point. And, and Grand Island, we've well documented their offensive display in the first half. The defense wasn't up to the offensive standards in the first half, but here in the second half, they have really thwarted any offensive movement by Lewis and Porter. And now they have both the offense and defense working. The special teams clicked for them and scored a touchdown. And you look at Lewis and Porter, and it seems right now they're facing an impossible task. Grand Island hitting on all cylinders now. Well, with Grand Island heading into the playoffs next week, and last week, of course, you know, they won the Division Three championship. They're tuning up for next week's uh, playoff matchup, still to be determined who they will play. But they're tuning up, and they look very well. Moran untouched. He fell down. It's a fake, and they get the pass complete, but well short of a first down. It's fumbled and recovered. Steve Hess caught the pass. The fumble recovered out here by Jason George. Well, they went for it, and that's why they called that timeout. I should have thought of that, but uh, at this point in the game, really didn't think they'd, they'd do something like that. But they didn't make it, and uh, it really doesn't hurt them. I mean, they're, they're pretty far behind. It doesn't really hurt them that much. Well, Grand Allen gets their first possession of the second half. They've scored a touchdown off a blocked punt. And they take over on the Luport 26-yard line, leading at 45-16. to 16. And, and we're going to get a new lineup, I'm sure, on both sides coming up very soon. But Bob McDonald still comes back out to quarterback here. No back, so they're going to throw the ball. No, McDonald is going to keep it. And he turns to the outside, gets Bobby close to the 20-yard line. Hey, not a bad run there. He made a nice cut to the right. And uh, once he got inside to, to pick up that yardage, he was basically on his own. About four yards there. You know, Gene Masters is a tremendous high school football coach, but I don't see the wisdom of running Bob McDonald at this point in the ball game. You're They've right got a much on that bigger one. game coming up next week. That's it. And this one... He should be out of there, really. Is, uh, just, it's just pretty much over. 
second man through, Anthony Scott on the carry inside the 20-yard line. Dennis Brochet got a, the first piece of him. I don't think they're really going to put it up big anymore, but the point that you mentioned, Lou, Bob McDonald should probably be out of this game. I, I, he, he's done well. He, he's shown what he wanted to do, and you know he's got the talent. They should be resting him for next week's more important playoff matchup. If you're going to keep him in there, just make him hand the ball off. Don't let him run the football. <laughs> yeah, but you never know what can happen, you know. It's a strange game. Hands off to Troy Thomas. Thomas on the outside. Turns the corner. The 10, the 5. And Jeff Schuen, enough speed and enough angle to tackle Thomas at about the 2-yard line. Well, if anybody was going to catch him on the Luport defense, it's going to be the quickest man out there, Jeff Schuen. And he caught him as he's down to about the 2-yard uh, line, I believe. Troy Thomas, number 34. Watch Thomas. He has the two backs leading, and they seal off the Luston Porter defense. And it's just a race now. And Schuen... Just enough speed to bring Thomas down. But they're threatening inside the five once again. They've marked the ball. It looks like the four from this angle. Less than five and a half remaining here in the third quarter. And Leo, in the score beginning the mount for Grand Island, this is really an anomaly. Lewis and Porter has hung into most ball games. McDonald on a busted play, it looks like, is going to roll it out. And, and there's just nothing but a white McDonald's wall there. No, the he really didn't have Pushed much to do but to get out of bounds, and that's exactly what he did to, to avoid getting hammered out there. But, uh, yeah, you're right, Lou. You know, Luport has uh, played most of the games close. Against Niagara Wheatfield, they lost by, I believe, five points, but they came back and scored some late touchdowns in the fourth quarter, which really didn't matter. And that was probably uh, one of their worst losses so far, but today they... They really, they've been handled by Grand Island, but of course they're being handled by, you know, the top team in the division. Thomas inside, but not in the end zone, inside the five. And uh, close to the goal line, they mark it about the uh, one and a half, maybe two yard line. It'll bring up third down. Of course, this is their second consecutive division championship. And you know, Gene Masters has got, had the core last year, and a lot of these guys came back for this year's team. And uh, it's it's worked once again. Touchdown, Grand Island. Troy Thomas gets the honors and the score. Well, he had three last week, so uh, no reason why he shouldn't get in on the act and pick up his first of the day, which will... Bring it up to 51 to 16. You're asking me? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's 51 I'm to 16. I'm just adding. I'm kind of adding. It. It's getting a little. <laughs> the score is getting getting way up there now. So. Jim Prinnell to attempt yeah. the extra point drive. Get that calculator in my head working. Grand Island this year, first game of the year. No, the kick, kick is good. Kick is good. This is 52 nothing. Island. Grand Island came out this year and we're tied by clearance to Luke Work, 7 to 7 and have since posted an impressive 5 and 1 record 5 and 0 oh, of course in Division 3 and they will go undefeated in Division 3 they defeated Tonawanda 27 to 7 in week 2 for their first win of the year and really their loss came in a, in a real tough tough battle with one of the top teams in Western New York in a non-division game, as I mentioned. They defeated Williamsville North 7 to nothing, And just leafing through the, the, the pages here to, to point out what kind of a, a season they have had to get them to this championship point. Yeah, Williamsville North, uh, they beat 7 nothing. He said that was the team that had the tough defense in Division Three, but uh, only came up with about 39 points so far this season. Then they defeated uh, Niagara Wheatfield in a game we televised for you. 12 to 6. Another touchback on the another kickoff. Great kick by Scott Grand Allen defeated Ken Warris 21 to 14 for another win. And what a headline said was a, a perfect Grand Allen to tell you how dominating they were in that football game. Yet they didn't even come close to scoring as many points as they put up today. Their loss came against, I'm, I'm trying to remember if it was uh, Jamestown or Lockport, and that's what I'm looking 
back through the stats for. Either, either way, sure. you're talking about yeah. two of the better teams in Western New York. Well, you're also and moving Allen Rick's right up there. You're also moving up to Division One, where the uh, you know competition should be a little stronger because the, the schools have a have a larger talent pool to choose from in Division One. It was Lockport in Week Six, and it was a close game that uh, Lockport came out and squeaked out a win. And that's how they stand, 5-1-1. One, one. Second down and long for Lewiston Porter. We're on a clock watch here. Flags go down. Good to see that uh, Tracy is back in there at quarterback, able to shake off the injury. We're talking about Ray Tracy rather than Dave. Dave took over for Ray in the last Offside, series. Grand Island. Grand Island offsides is the call. I think the next time Grand Island gets the ball, I don't think you're going to see Bob McDonald back in there because the first possession of the second half, maybe they wanted to get him some action, get him back into the, into the game, but really there's no reason why he should be back in there when they come back out. Kevin Doldon enters the game for the rush. Under four minutes remaining in the third quarter in a game dominated by Grand Island, 52-16. to 16. Tracy is back to pass, throws over the middle for DiNardo, and it's incomplete. A hand on it, Anthony Scott. And he was throwing in double coverage there. Oh, Grand Island, they're still playing tough defensively. They haven't loosened up at all in this one. Third down and six coming up. Mizaki and Tracy come out, split to the near side. Maxson and I, we've got a new running back in there. A couple of new running backs. That's Ryan Burns on the carry, lead blocking the carry. with uh, Tackentine. Tackentine back in at fullback, and that time Burns was the halfback. I don't know if you caught that, Fourth Lou, down and five. but on that last play, Anthony Scott was doing a little dancing, number 33 for Grand Three, Island four, after nine, that six. tackle. He wasn't in on the tackle, but he was... Uh, I mean, he, he was doing some kind of little dance out there. I don't know exactly how you would describe it. There's a, probably, you're looking at one of the offensive and defensive players of the game right there. You have to say McDonald's going to be the offensive player of the game. Four touchdown passes in the first half. Feeney to his left there has a couple interceptions. He's getting a break on on the bench now. He's yeah, he set the tone Justin defensively. Justin Breidenbaker at corner. Feeney definitely set the tone defensively early in this game. They faked the punt again and throw out here and off the helmet on number 44, Dennis Brochet. Brochet had enough for the first down, but the ball hit him in the head. Yeah, it's pretty tough to catch him when it hits you there. <laughs> you gotta say that. He's gotta look for the ball and get it into his hands. Again, Jay Moran came unblocked on that play. And Harry Lawler, he's saying the heck with the punt since the last one was blocked for a touchdown. He's faked it twice and he gives Grant Allen the ball at the 25-yard line again. I guess he feels that against the wind, he's not going to get much of a punt off anyway. He might as well just try and go for it. That's the only logic I can think of. Oh, yeah, like that, that. that's got to be the logic. Obviously, the score being what it is, he figures on fourth down, hey, if I can get it, I can keep my offense out there a little longer, get them a little more work, you know, so they can know, just have some fun before the end of the season. Conventional thinking goes out the window when you're done on the scoreboard, 52 to 16. Timeout is called by Grand Island. Timeout, Grand Island. We have a new quarterback in there, Justin Breidenbaker, number five, a junior, 5'10", 160 pounder, was ready to go under center before the timeout was called. Yeah, Gene Masters making uh, a few readjustments in his lineup, resting up some of the starters for the big playoff matchup. And uh, he mentioned to me that uh, two of the teams that he would possibly pl be playing next week would be either Depew or Clarence, but uh, he wasn't sure. And uh, at this point in time, we're not we're not sure on that either. <laughs> Two ten still remaining in the third quarter. And Grand Island Vikings putting a icing on the cake here to a championship season. And the salt is rubbed a little deeper into the Lewiston Porter Lancer wounds. First and 10 for Grand Island. Bryden Baker, the quarterback. 
And I think we have Sean McClellan at the fullback position. And the handoff to Kevin Urker. And off to Kevin Urker. Urker gains almost five yards. Well, I guess Grand let's credit Russell with the tackle. Grand Island's got to be happy to uh, get some of their second line players in because with next week coming up as a playoff game, just in case, uh, you know, depending if injuries come up or what have you, it's good to have these second line players get the experience, get into a game, and, you know, get the feel of what's going on. They go to the up, man. And that was Brett V. Ross on the carry. V. Ross brought down by Jeff Schuin at around the 20 yard line. They give him forward progress to the 19. That will bring third down and five. You know, they haven't really used him that much in the backfield today. Uh, last year, we did the Niagara Wheatfield Grand Island game, and he was pretty much a star back there, and he dominated. But. Uh, it appears that the, they've changed things around this year with, the, with Scott McDonald back there and also a Troy Thomas. So. Roche in, Hess out. Anthony Scott. Anthony Scott breaks a tackle. He's knocked out of bounds at the one. It'll be first and goal for Grand Island. And out of bounds at the one-yard line. Great run by Anthony Scott. Anthony Scott was looking for a touchdown there and almost got it. Here he is. Yeah, he's going to take it up the left side. He got a few good blocks, but he fought off some tackles also and uh, just misses getting into the end zone. Only there. prolonging the agony for the Luport defense, it looks like. Elcock missed him, and then Schuin hustled back and knocked him out of bounds again. Viros, touchdown. I think this is going to be an Adelphia cable record for points scored in one game by a team. Well, what did we have in the North Tonawanda LaSalle game? 56, I 56. think. 56. I might have to check that because I, I don't exactly well, remember. We'll pick that up. It was in the, the 50s, 50s, though, and we're, we're going to hit 60 here for Grand Island today. Might have been 59, though. I, I, I'm not sure. If you, if you, if you got that, the uh, score on that one in there, you might want to check that. Well, that was uh, early on in the season. That was about week two, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I believe so because we had LaSalle the first two weeks. Oh, NT LaSalle is actually... Early on in the uh, score in that game wound up. I know you're all dying at home to hear this. Grand Allen has 59 right now. They lead it 59 to 16. North Tonawanda had 59 too, right? We're still the third coldest quarter. Yes, no. We're looking. 59 to 6 in that game. Okay. So they have tied the season high for points scored on a television game. That's quite a total. 59, 59 was the uh, Tonawanda LaSalle. We're talking with Howard Simon, who's live on JJL right now. Well, 59 to 6 was the uh, North Tonawanda LaSalle game. North Tonawanda. Scott McDonald, the kick now. For the and, you know, we don't want to rub any salt into Lewis and Porter as, as I use that phrase again because you know, a lot of sympathy. I, I played high school football, and I was on the short end of a 72 to nothing score. Let me tell you, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. I could imagine that. There it goes. Oh, it's drilled into the stomach of one of the up men. And it's fumbled. I tell you, David Orsi took a shot in recovering. He didn't get up too quick on that either. And then he hit. And it was just too much pain on one play, I think. Grant Allen says they have it. The official says Luport does. Hey, something went their way. I mean, if that was at his head, it would have taken it off. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that kick he got hit right in the gut. And he David stayed. Orson. He stayed. He went down and stayed on the ground. Couldn't even make a play uh, after the ball started bouncing around. You're gonna see it right here. First down for Luport. Like a oh, fast man. ball. <laughs> hey, Luport will go to the hurry-up offense here. How about that? Tracy's back to pass. He faces a rush. Throws long. Ball dying out here and it's picked off. Oh, picked off by Anthony Scott. Well, it looked like it looked like there was going to be a battle for it, but it's, uh, Anthony Scott, number 33, came down with it. And we've got a Lancer hurt. The intended and receiver has the on the play Anthony is injured. Interception. Third interception of Tracy this afternoon. It's 31 seconds. I believe that is Dave Tracy. 
Yeah, he's injured. He was the intended receiver. Almost, uh, almost had a chance to grab that ball. Looked like there was a battle up there. Here's the throw. As you see, see the ball right starts to wobble in the air, and that makes it hang up there. And Dave Tracy injured as he comes down, and Anthony Scott with the interception. Our Grand Island football continues this year. As the Vikings will 31 the seconds remaining here Saturday. in the third quarter. Well, I mean, things are bad enough, and the last thing Luport needs is for is for uh, their players to be getting hurt out there in, in a game which is, for all intents and purposes, over. Again, the quest for Rich starts next week. And Mark Donato walks off with Tracy, who appears to be okay. With a sore hand or shoulder, it looks like. Favoring that left hand. Um, well, it was an interesting game in the first half, Leo, because Luport was able to move the football, but once Grand Allen's defense geared it up, and their offense still hasn't been stopped, and Anthony Scott takes a over the 25-yard line. Once Grand Allen's defense got into the game, it was uh, pretty much over. And that was... Yeah, they sure did some big defensive plays. Uh, the couple interceptions uh, by Feeney. And then uh, really to, to start the second half, that block punt really put it away. The block punt and Scott McDonald returning it for a touchdown really that really hit the nail on the head there. And that's the end of the third quarter. 59-16, to 16, Grand Island leading. Grand Island scoring a touchdown on every possession. Let's see what happens in the fourth quarter. Can't end mercifully enough for the Lancers. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Thanks for joining us for the fourth quarter. A lot of new players into the ball game with Grand Allen well ahead. Gain of three on the play. Brett Ross on the carry. V. Ross on the carry. Be short of the first down. Last man up on the bottom of the pile for Lewis and Porter, Jason George. Senior defensive lineman, 5'10", 177 pounder. Making that tackle. Third down and short. Now, Grant Allen has not been forced to punt all day today, so this could be a moral victory for the Lancers should they hold them here and force them to punt. But it's a first down for Grant Allen and much, much more. Look out. At the 20, the 15 tackle. Ryan Burns caught up to him. Kevin Erker with his moment in the sun, the junior 5'6", 145 pounder. Took that one for 50 plus yards. Man, Erker just turned the corner. It looked like it was going to be maybe a 5, 10 yard gain. But boy, after he turned the corner, he really put on a, a burst of speed. And, and the tackle by Ryan Burns just goes to show he's one of the Lewiston Porter's top players, and he's still trying out there. The thing's starting to get a little out of hand. Players yeah. losing their tempers and some skirmishes breaking out. The officials and coaches doing a good job to break it up. They give Urker 60 yards on the carry. Ryan Burns not giving up, made the tackle. Uh, flags are down on the field for the skirmishes. Let's look for the guy in the white hat. There he is, and we'll see what uh, happens here to, to sort it out. But Kevin Urker takes a third and one play, 60 yards for Grand Island. But Lou, you know, you look at this thing from a coaching point of view. Now, now Gene Master. Gene Masters is not really trying to blow him out. I mean, he's not throwing the ball, and he's just gone to a basic running offense. And what more can he? What more can they do? I mean, they don't really want to make it look bad. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think he's that type of a guy. Well, on the other hand, Leo, no matter who you put in the ball game, they're all going to be going out there and giving it their very best. A guy like Urker didn't get to carry the ball too much this year. You know, he's going to do all he can and try and earn a spot for next year. He's only a junior. That's true. It's just a point I was trying to make it. I probably used too many words to just say that I, I really don't think Grand Island is trying to run up the score no, I as don't far think. as head coach Gene Masters. Just like you said, Lou, some of these guys, you know, that they're finally getting their chance and they want to prove they can do it. 
official talking with both coaches and the main thing here they want of course uh, is keep the order knowing the tempers are running a little short and extended discussion here uh, there may also be a discussion on uh, where they will spot the ball after all of this well Lou you know what I think they ought to just Put the ball down somewhere. I don't think anybody's really going to argue about it at this point. They're bringing it back. The official is waving some people back. Well, let's see what this is all about. I'm a little confused here. Personal foul against Grand Island. Personal foul against Lewis and Porter. Two players ejected. Offsetting penalty. And since it's during the play and not after the play, Offsetting penalties wipe out the play. Well, Kevin Urker had his moment, but uh, he can save that one on the highlight tape, but it doesn't go for anything. So that brings us back to third and one. Again, offsetting penalties during a play wipes out the play. If that was after the play, right, the they would have the still. ball down at about the five or six yard line. But since it happened during the play, it's an offsetting penalty. And I think maybe that's what Harry Lawler was trying to get across, across on the sideline over there, and it, he got the point across very well. Yes, he sure did. He wipes out a big game. Well, Kevin Urker had his moment in the sun. Kevin, you could tell everybody and just edit the tape and pick out that one part and say, yeah, I ran for 60 yards in a ball game, and everybody will believe you. Yeah, nobody really saw the flag anyway, so... <laughs> Edit it on your camcorder or whatever else and, and keep your moment in the sun in this ball game. They still, uh, well, he's a junior, though. He's still got next year, so might not have to save that one. We're still discussing it with the Lewis and Porter team. Well, it's now, again, game. Luport has that chance for that moral victory once again. Can they stop Grant Allen and force Grant Allen to punt? Third and one. Second man through. Urker breaks a tackle and gets the first down. Although a much shorter carry this time. Only three yards. But still good enough for a first down. Didn't catch the number, Lou, but there was a defender for Luport in the backfield. Almost had Urker behind the line of scrimmage, but uh, the speedy back got away and picked up the first down. The ball is at the 37 and a half yard line, 1040 remaining in this ball game. In case you've just joined us, it's 59 to 16 in favor of Grand Island. Bernadoni on the carry gets it out over the 40. I was gonna say, Lou, but stick around. <laughs> like we said, are. A lot of a lot of new faces in the game. I, I always say that in high school football, in the pros, of course, when the game gets out of hand, everybody changes the channel. That doesn't happen here at high school football because there are at least 10 new players out on the field whose mom and dad want to see him play. That's right. And so we'll try and keep the enthusiasm level and the interest level up for you in the broadcast. Second down and seven yards to go for Grand Allen. v on the carry is tackled right away. He got a few. It was 56. Ryan Bush. Tackled by Bush and Ryan. Uh, Ryan Reimer, you got it. Of course, now we got to look up and down the rosters to put a name to the number. We really can't tell you who Grant Allen is going to play at this point, but of course, by the time you watch this game, it may be apparent. It should be apparent by then. And Bryden Baker trying to turn it upfield himself on the quarterback keeper. Loses about three yards on the and he lost a few yards. Chewing out here along with Tony Reimer. Fourth and seven here. Fourth down and are they going to look for... Uh, are they going to spoil Luport and yeah. go for it and make it, or are they going to kick it away? Well, let's see. The ball spotted at the 40-yard line. Here's Gene Masters. Master of another division championship. Division three. And they send back Bryden Baker to punt. 
Shoe in the deep man, standing at his own 36 yard line. A heavy rush, a good kick. It drives Shoe back all the way to his 26 yard line. Now he turns it upfield to the 35 and tackled at the 40 yard line. For number 73, Jeff Millar. Spotted at the 41 yard line, first and 10 for the Lancers. And, well, Luport's going to get some pretty good field position here to try to put a put some more points on the board. By the time Luport snaps the ball, there'll be eight minutes or less remaining in this ball game. Happy fans for Grand Island. Yeah, they enjoyed a nice afternoon out here. Got kind of cloudy now, but still temperatures very warm for this time of year. Got to be happy with that. Luport to the hurry-up offense with Ray Tracy at quarterback. And he's throwing out here long for Mazaki and almost it was open, Lou. A hand on it. Broken up by Jim Criddle. By Criddle. Jim Criddle. Second down and 10 for Luport. Bring up second down and 10 now. And Ray Tracy... Still running the shotgun offense for Lewis and Porter. Gonna, that, that's quite least, a shotgun, too. Because make the he, score more. There's Tony Deep Pasquale on camera. I'm sorry. Man. Oh, uh, Tracy in that shotgun there. I mean, he drops way back. Almost looks like a uh, punting formation. He's eight yards back, and he's under a big rush here, and he just throws the ball away. And that's a one handed intercepted. Kevin still Urker. Going. Still going. Urker still going. He wants Kevin to get that. No one in the set again. The flag is down as Urquhart's tackled at the 25-yard line. Tracy just threw that up to avoid the rush, and Urker made a great one-handed interception and a nice return. Yeah, he wants to get in the end zone no matter what today. If any offensively, he's trying to get it defensively, but there is a flag. Illegal. Illegal block. It's against Lewiston Porter. Great Island ball. Here's the replay. See Tracy under rush. He just throws up a wing and a flare, and... Uh, he would have been better off to throw the ball out of bounds. And nothing good can happen out of that. Nope, nothing at all. It didn't happen. You're right, if he would have thrown it out of bounds, they still would have had possession of this. Desperation, of course, very evident on that play. That's going to move the ball back into the 14-yard line now. Allen pushes the ball to about the 14-yard line, first and 10. Ryan Baker, Baker quarterback. quarterback. Here's to one of the up-backs, fighting, fighting. And a fresh Ross. Ross, a strong run. Before he's grabbed and hugged, tackled by Matt Elcock. Well, the Vikings still playing hard. They've kept that level of enthusiasm right up there, and that's a good sign for a team going into the playoffs. Seven yards on the carry brings up second down and three at the seventh. Nowhere to go. Ryan Jeffords in there to tackle. Stop by Ryan Jeffords. Ecker, Urker for that loss. It's one of the few times that maybe the only time we've seen Grant Allen trapped for a loss for a running play except for the third down play on their last drive. Jeffords getting in. Well, it's pretty basic now, though. You know, you know that Grand Island is basically going to stick it on the ground. So, now, Luport's playing the same defense they did in the first half. The difference in Grand Island is they were play action passing for touchdown. Ridenbacker on the option decides to keep it, turns it upfield, and it's a touchdown. Well, he made a great effort to get into the end zone. Some some good running, and he caught that corner nicely. Because actually, by the time he got down to the five, it looked as though he was going to be stopped or cut off from the angle we have here. It's 65 to 16 right now. It is. There were a couple of report tacklers who took a dive at him, but just couldn't couldn't get him around the ankles, and his yeah. speed took him into the end zone. And I'm, I'm, it's a private conversation almost, folks, but I'm going to mention this to Leo on the air. Did I recall you saying you would edit the highlights to this football game? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Last week's games, yeah, I got those. But we didn't talk about this week yet. Oh, I'll do it. I don't care. The kick is up. And the kick is good. And good. Double sixes on their score. Grand, Grand Island, 66 to 16. There's one thing though. We won't have to. We won't have to search through the tapes to find the highlights from this week's game. A lot of highlights in this one, and mostly on the Grand Island side, though. 
Tequila by the Pet Band. If you join us late, it was a pretty competitive first half, even though Grand Island led by a few scores at halftime. Lewiston Porter was able to move the football and scored 16 points all in the first half. Grand Island's defense had trouble shutting down the Lancers. But the Lancers never shut down Grand Island, and they have done so only once in this ball game. And that's why the score stands at 66 to 16. You know, our offensive player of the game, we go back to the first half. Bob McDonald, who was four of five Jim passing Curl, at one point, here for Grand Island. And five of six for one point with four touchdowns. Back. We don't want to forget his accomplishments in this ball game. Yeah, everybody's getting their well, they're the chance reason to shine here. And the ball is picked up across the way. J.J. Russell. J.J. Russell He's across the 20-yard line tackle. Get up and thought he'd run again, but the officials will have none of it. Bruno and Kevin Urker. I tell you, there are going to be some people on the special teams that are tired. All those kickoffs. Oh yeah. Well, Lewis DePorter said their chance at the run at the run back. That's for sure. They'll put some points on the board. The score on this one's kind of Shotgun, reminiscent of one of those. Tracy throws it off of Donardo's hands. I was going to say, uh, the score on this one's kind of reminiscent of one of those uh, college games where you get a, a top 10 team. And they, they oh, yeah. This one's got Nebraska and uh, little Appalachian State <laughs> written all over. You got it. Lukeport. <laughs> Still going to the hurry up offense. Want to get whatever points they can. Pass is complete out here. Shewin. And he's tackled immediately. Caught. Tackled by, by Jeremy 44, Bernadoni. Jeremy Bernadoni. Be uh, just a gain of yards, one yard on the play. Third and nine. The clock continues to run just under 5.30 left in this one. And we've got the other Tracy in at quarterback now. And he is looking, looking. is. Set low, he makes a pass out. Is that to an eligible player? I don't think so. Ryan Rabarzak, the center, caught the pass. Hey, you got it. Ineligible receiver downfield, I would imagine. It's got to be a call. Kevin Goldon, well, you know, on the quarterback. Innovative try, but. Rabarzak, the center. Watch it's that instinct, Lou. The ball's thrown to you. What are you going to do? You catch it and run with it for a little while. <laughs> It's not a tackle eligible play because the center can never be. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to put everybody on the other side of the center to have an eligible center. Hey, he's got a highlight too, though. Well, unfortunately, it stops the clock again. 5 10. The only way the center can be eligible is everybody on the line of scrimmage would have to be to the left or right of the center. Big 66 to 16. Well, that would be see. something if we saw that formation. Timeout, Luport. Luport calls timeout. Will they punt here, Leo? They faked two punts in this half after having their first punt of the half blocked. I don't know. It really, it really doesn't matter at this point in the game, but I guess to just to keep everybody Great active. Job by the Grand Island Varsity Cheerleaders. Keep people thinking. Uh, you know, they're going to go with their strategy. That, well, why throw everything out the window? They've worked hard all year, so. I guess no reason to, to throw it all away in the end. That's Stacy Adams on top of the truck, bearing herself against the elements. Cool breeze starting to pick up now as the sun sets. Gets a little bit cooler. You know, I'm looking over at Howard Simon down the way, and I'm trying to get his attention. Howard doing this game with WJJL Radio. I see him fighting with the timer. He's trying to keep that clock rolling here. <laughs> yeah, I might. Maybe I'll go over there and give him a hand. <laughs> He, he says uh, we, we want running clock like in soccer. Yeah, we'll get it Dave done. Tracy in Dave punt Tracy formation. Punt on the fourth down at 20. Then she throws it. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was an over or under on this game? Flag offside down, on offside on Grand Island. Well, I'd have to say I did, I'd have to say the over. Don't want to condone any type of... Uh, Anything here, we shouldn't really talk about unders and overs and that type of thing. But I'd say it would have been over. Well, 
Newport sending in a fresh uh, pair of legs. John Mazaki checking in. For additional blocking help. Crazy gets the snap and gets the kick away. A good punt. Good punt. And a couple it's guys in the space. At the 49-yard line out of bounds. Ryden Baker trying to hustle under it. Couldn't come up with it, but it rolled out of harm's way. And Grant Allen will take over on the Luport 48-yard line. And Bryden Baker will stay out there to run the Grand Island offense. Sitting there like that, you'd think she's a Lewiston Porter fan. Wonder if the dog had to pay admission. Yes, it's that time, folks, where we search for things to say. Yeah. Hey, I didn't know you could bring pets to a football game, was it? <laughs> Depends on what stadium you're in. I haven't seen that at a Bills game Only yet this year. Only docile animals. I haven't, seen a it, I haven't seen it at a Bills game, but I'll tell you, some of those sections, depending on where you sit, uh, you'd probably be safer if, if you brought a dog for protection. Handoff. Urker is trapped behind the line of scrimmage. Off well, yeah, why don't we take care of business here? Each week we select the Adelphia Cable offensive and defensive players of the game. Adelphia Cable salutes their outstanding performances, and uh, you get the job of picking them. Shouldn't be too hard today. The Adelphia Cable offensive player of the game? Bob McDonald, number 11, the quarterback of the Grand Island Vikings. There you see him at the bottom lower right of your screen on the sidelines. And the defensive player of the game, uh, Grand Island played tough all the way, but setting the tone in the first half with two interceptions, number nine, Tom Feeney. Feeney thwarted a couple of Lewis and Porter drives in Grand Island territory with those interceptions. Two worthy candidates, and will present each award winner with a plaque at the close of the season on a high school football wrap-up show on Adelphia Cable. Well, that should be interesting. We'll have highlights from... Uh, all the games that we did this season, d discussions of those games and and how they uh, how they contributed to uh, what the standings turned out to be in the eventual playoff picture. Right. Jeremy Bernardoni on the carry. Backer pitches to Bernardoni on that option play for six yards. Short of the first down. Fourth down. It'll be fourth down and seven for Grand Allen, and three minutes remain in this ball game. 66 to 16 for those just tuning in. Flicking the channels tonight. You certainly missed a, a big offensive display Fireworks. by Grand Island. Oh, they had tremendous big plays in the first half. 82-yard touchdown pass, a 16-yard touchdown pass, 78 and 50-yard touchdown passes for McDonald, who had 224 yards in the first half alone, and those four TDs. Sacked and thrown out of bounds by Dennis Brochet. Yeah, Brochet the, almost threw him into his own bench there. As uh, the players on the Grand Island sideline kind of scattered out of the way to let Breidenbaker take the fall. You know, Jeff Schuen for There's Lewis and Bob Porter McDonald, had, though. Yeah, There's McDonald, a... as we said. Today he was 5 of 6 passing, 224 yards. He had four rushes for 14 yards, four touchdowns throwing, and the offensive player of the game. Jeff Schuen you were talking about, two touchdowns for Lewiston Porter. Oh, he's picked off by Moran out here. And he is thrown down by a wrestler tackle, David Orsi. And flags, Lou, we got flags down. Unnecessary roughness on Orsi because the whistle had blown. Yeah, and he, he threw him down anyway. He had Moran in a headlock.